and the uh, environment as well as the of it. As well as signing uh, an AOC document in reference to the country book, which is on the That it? That's it. Okay. All right, next, <clears throat> approve the minutes. The minutes of October 18th, 2021. Make the motion with approval. Second. I have a motion by Brian and second by Judy. Any further discussion on that? The meeting should last me in October. The minutes last me in October. We'll see an answer in your packets for suggested change uh, to the uh, community concerns portion for the university of the presentation. We um, uh, submitted a proposed uh, resolution to go in the uh, in the town plan, and the, the change in verbiage for the minutes uh, reflects the, the intent of the language of the minutes. The minutes should be changed to adopt that language, which is what was there on the committee. So this would just be a change to the minutes, not the town plan. That's correct. But it's just an addition to the minutes, so it's uh, captured. Okay. So we want that to be set in an amendment? Um, just simply a, a change to the minutes, that's all. Okay. Change to the minutes as presented here. So that that right. I'll make that part of my motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion with it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, community concerns. We have some community concerns tonight. Go ahead, sir. Hey, how you doing? Could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, Don McDowell. How you doing, John? Don. Don, okay. Um, so I just uh, I've heard there's a rumor going around about this December 7th vote. Uh, December 7th vote will be about the school. The board's always been really good at reminding us that uh, it's very interesting as much community input as possible. Last summer, we made sure that as many people as possible could get there. That so I guess I'm just a little, I don't know if it's a concern, but certainly a comment, a question. Just wondering um, why we could have a vote on this ATV issue in December when it really wouldn't matter if we did it at town meeting where we would certainly, surely get a greater turnout and greater uh, representation of the people in Morristown as to how they feel about this issue. Um, my own very unscientific survey of this town is that there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of interest in this school issue. Uh, and clearly there's people talking about it, but there's not a lot of people talking about it. And uh, I think it would be our best interest to uh, wait till the meeting to decide me to be They're not going to be on the roads, no matter how the vote goes, until uh, May, is my guess. And so they're not going to be on the roads in the market. So I'm just kind of wondering if, in fact, the rumor that I'm hearing is, is true, why the board might consider expediting this vote. Well, I, I can tell you from, from my opinion on the ATV group has been waiting a long, long time. And I get that through emails and texts and messages and people come to my house. It's not expedited. This has been waiting a long, long time. And, and you're right, um, this season doesn't start till after town meeting. You're right about that. But um, I feel like, you know, an obligation to have an answer for these folks because they've been waiting so long. And I can tell you one thing, is that the second that warning says ATV on it, people are going to come out in droves. It's it's not going to be um, a, an underattended vote. I can tell you that from the just the comments I've gotten since we mentioned it at the last meeting. Um, I I definitely disagree with you as far as not having turnout. People will come and turn out and vote, 
even if it's just they're here more for the ABV vote or the cannabis vote, maybe you're right. You know, they're not going to be that excited about voting for the merge, but it also comes at a, at a good time. It won't take a lot away from the town meeting day vote that way. It'll be more of a showcase vote for the ATVs. So that's my opinion. That's one out of five. Um, I don't know how the other folks feel. We do have a potential warning in front of us tonight with multiple articles on it. That is still to be discussed whether or not we include that that part of it. So it's you know it's not it's not decided yet. We do have a potential one been vetted by our town attorney and um, you know worded the correct way and everything. But you're right, it is it is um, potentially going to happen on December seventh. Uh, something we have to discuss and decide tonight. So from board, we have people coming from both sides. You know we've gotten many many emails and calls and. I got one today. So but I do disagree with you that it won't be a turnout because it will be a turnout. <laughs> I can tell you that. Well, I hope you're right. I hope it I hope it will be a turnout. I, I assume we're gonna hear the exact wording of it. Will it be an article? Yes. Yes. If if we decide to have included, we can we can show that around if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. So you got one. So, no, I, I know there, we've gotten a couple of emails. Pro people and the con people are both saying the same thing. Rather, not that the vote not happen on December seventh. So yeah, we have. I um, I, I don't, I don't personally feel a need that it has to happen in December. The vote. Okay, thank you, Jude. I feel the same way. Um, if if since the season doesn't start until May, I. And and we've waited this long. I I'm fine waiting until town meeting. Um, I do uh, worry that it um, it having it sooner and um, not enough people coming out um, just could create more potential issues. Um, but and yeah, so I I I hear you, and I I am open to waiting until town meeting. Brian, what do you feel then? Well. I'm in favor of doing it on the seventh only because we've gone through this, gone through this, gone through this. Every time this even comes out, our phones ring and our emails do. And I think maybe we can fix it. So we'll get the voters out. We could basically we could mail in their ballots. Everybody gets a ballot so they could they've got it. Either if they want to vote, they do. If they don't, they don't. That way, once it's made our decision, whatever it is, it's made. So it's just that it's time to get let it go. And the other thing that goes with that, just a second, Jamie, is that this article is still an advisory vote. Um, it is up to us. We we want to put the feelers out and see how people feel, you know, pros and cons. But in the end, it's actually up to us. It's, this is a non-binding vote. For the ATVs, um, just so that's clear for everybody, we we could have made the decision to do it ourselves, but as you know, we've said the responsible thing is to poll as many people as we can, and um, get a true idea of who really wants it or doesn't want it. So, Carrie, what do you feel about it? Well, I've stated right along, I will not be part of the vote on this, but I also want to remind everybody that at the information meetings that it was said that it would probably be combined with the school vote if and when we had it. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Yeah. I mean, so that, that was that was made clear at the school meeting. Uh, <coughs> two, two quick questions, Bob. Um, Go ahead, Jamie. So Brian, in his statement, mentioned uh, <coughs> sending ballots to every voter. And I know that that was discussed sort of in length, at length last uh, right board meeting. And I don't know where that lands, um, whether you folks have, have made a decision on that or not. Um, I would say that you know, if, if it can't happen, uh, the vote can't happen at, at town meeting day, uh, in order to get the best representation of the voters to vote, uh, I would think that sending ballots to all voters would be the best sort of action. Um, I think that the town clerk had actually admitted that you know, the, the turnout from last year was by far and away pretty amazing as compared to the years past. Um, so I would certainly urge uh, the town to put forth the money 
uh, yeah, the same balance for all folks. Um, I know you think that's. Um, um, and then additionally, um, the non binding resolution was described as a uh, survey last week. Um, and if that's the case, you know, surveys are data, data require, you know, results and, and analyzation. I'm wondering exactly how you folks plan to look at and analyze the votes uh, when they come in. I mean, what, how, how, you, how will you be looking at that? I think it's important to have that decision made before you get the results, as opposed to deciding how you're going to look at the data after. I think it's pretty cut and dried. If you have 700 for and 500 against, then you've got your answer. So that's how you vote. You that's vote. in my mind, that's how it would be. Pretty is clear that, cut. That, if it's 650 to 649, then you've got a different thing. Okay. And is that, is that the, the feeling of the entire work? I don't know. What, what do you guys feel? I'll say yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my sense all along has been that it was the intent of the select board to hold the vote and um, have whatever decision that um, that vote told us um, guide our writing of our ordinance. I, I wouldn't go against the vote. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, good good points to bring up, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you. And um, and we still haven't officially decided whether we're mailing ballots. And right. we had a little more of a discussion about that um, during the Board of Civil Authority meeting. Um, and it's quite a significant um, budgetary concern, but um, there's a lot of pluses um, <clears throat> associated with sending ballots, which one one is that um, voter turnout um, will be a lot higher if we mail ballots. So Yeah. Go ahead, Sarah. I was waiting. Yeah, they um the select board tasked me at the last um meeting to get more information from the Secretary of State's office about mailing the ballots. Mr. Bland and I um had a difference of opinion, and so I was going to present that information tonight and ask you to make an affirmative decision one way or another when we discuss the warning as part of that discussion. Right. It sounds good. Sounds good. Buck, we got a Background has three wheelers, and I'm not totally not against it. They have a right. Uh, one thing you got to do, you got it on the paperwork. Sunset Drive. Sunset Drive is dead ass street. Right. It's not on there. You, you can see the warning. It was on it. Yeah, I know, but it's not. And it's not now. The problem we got is with this whole, this whole shenanigan is Langdale Road is Google, and it says it goes through my driveway. Right. We have put signs up. Yeah. We, we put that to we rest. We put our own signs up because when you guys put up, you put it up backwards. Nobody ever to see it. Right. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure that you're right. Backwards. We don't need 300, 300 no. three wheelers going up our street. We got one now running around on the ground now back there all the time. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Buckley. Thank you. Um, is there any more discussion on this topic? We have another community concern, I know, Pam. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Buckley. Dog control. Brian, Brian Kellogg. We had another incident over there. We got a couple of incidents on Sunset Drive. My colleague said never get hold you. Then a ticket hold you because they're going to get about a ticket, but it never happened. We had another neighbor, the Hill family. The people across the road are pit bull and their husker. Shepherd got her in a car for two hours. And she, she's been, she's not quite not, I've been around the dog been that old. I mean, mm -hmm. that. But what are you going to do about it? You told me you're going to pass out tickets. And I, my understanding is you said that you have no backing from the board. No, is, that true, is that true or not true? It's nothing to do with the board. So if you give them a ticket, they have they don't show up a court. You can put a warrant up for the rest. If not. No. If I if I write somebody a ticket right now today, they have the right to pay the ticket as a fine and say they were guilty. And it's called a waiver. They waive a smaller fee. If they go to court, whoever reports it has to show up to court. And I have to, if I'm the one writing the ticket, I have to show up. One of the problems with me right now, I have a full time job. I understand. That. Well, okay. Maybe we have to have a new dog. That's board. fine because there's something I'm bringing up because the next time. We're not the only town. Cambridge are putting out because of our dog, dog enforcement. 
yeah. persons because all the animals in the pandemic are really adopting them and stuff. I can just tell you, um, those dogs brought the rope mix. I can watch them very closely. I'm not there. I put does the PV answer those calls if Brian's not available, Jason? They don't, no. We to a certain degree, but we don't go take dogs to the pound unless we find something out about. Yeah. Um, but dog bite calls, we let we call Brian and we'll have them as yeah. needed, but right. it hasn't been a main. That's why I wonder if he's not available, then an officer can, can handle Yeah, it. we try to do our best, but it's, I mean, we usually take a piggyback on what Brian is. I don't make a place. It's not their job. But it is if it's if it's a, if there is some way to hack, but there was not a hack this last week. And you're going to speak on it. And nobody came before. We got the coat with her. I think we got a coat with her, but what the dog did was a full bone shepherd. Yeah. I don't I don't expect the them to come right now. I mean, I, I can take my care of myself. Um, but I'll probably be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll get satisfaction out of it. I'm not very full of sugar. No. Believe me. And that, those two dogs next door, they're, 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 they're doomed to a later here. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. You may you'll never hear the sound. <laughs> Go ahead, Pam. My name is Pam Locke. And uh, I wanted to bring this to show you people. First of all, I thank you for your time for listening. Um, I brought this to show you. This happened yesterday morning at 9 o'clock with a huge old long German Shepherd at the four-way corner, excuse me, at the four-way stop sign on Maple Street. This happened because a young child opened the door and an untethered dog bolted out and my dog and I are doing what we're supposed to be on a leash, registered, whatnot. This dog was out to kill. He's big, he had teeth. This was my boyfriend's jacket because I was sick yesterday. God willing, that would have been me. There's no way I could have got away from this dog safely. Um, he couldn't be here this evening as this was spur of the moment. We didn't know this meeting was tonight, but I certainly can get a statement or any of you um, would be able to speak to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I just want to ask how can we increase awareness um, of actually what the laws and regulations are in the town of Morristown for dogs? I've had seven incidents walking around this village with unleashed untethered dogs. Brian and I have been in contact. I've gone through my chain of what I've been told to do. And I have spoke with Brian. Sometimes it is a couple of days before he gets back to me. So clearly that's a big flaw. You need to have some kind of plan in place. If he can't tend to everything, then perhaps he needs an assistant. Maybe he doesn't want to do it anymore. I don't know. That's not my issue. But my issue is... Recent data on home construction spending suggests that builders might be starting to feel more confident. Thank you. Um, so that being said, um, what is the system in place for dog violations? That's what I want to ask you guys. Can you answer the Brian how it works? Well, since I've been doing it, what it is the first time I get a dog complaint, I go out and I give them a warning. A lot of times I don't even ask who's calling me. So that way when I get there, well, who called on my dog? It doesn't matter. Your dog's doing wrong. Then after that, we just, we used to give tickets. But when was the last ticket issued? I bet it's been five years. I got a brand new book in my thing that we don't use because they were a waste of time. And a waste of and why money. Do you say, why do you say that, Brian? Because what happened is they they could go to court, they wouldn't go to court, and they just throw them out because they're not worth it. The town gets no money back on them, so there might be something that would would uh, a, a ticket might discourage them, but it's not going to stop that little boy to let the dog out. I understand that that was states and well aware right. of that, and they do occur. However, when you have an animal like that in a village with a child situation, 
it's definitely not a safe one. And it's a recipe for disaster, as you know. This could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. I've had a labradoodle on Harrison Avenue come jump on me with his feet, knock my sunglasses off. I called you then. So that being said, there's been no fines <coughs> issue. Where do your reports go after you've taken a report? And where does that go? Where does that information go? Is it going to the select board? Who reviews this? And there again, where's it going? What are we doing? Um, it just seems like you call Brian. I'm not putting any all of the blame on you. You're one person. This is a situation that is really dangerous and opening up lawsuits all the way around. Um, so, you know, um, there's flaws in the system. I don't know if you guys have suggestions how to fix that, but it's you know, this is terrible. I can't walk around the village. I go about 19 miles a week. So I have to go way up to the school where there's no dogs. My dog is naughty when he needs another dog, but we're on our leash and we're doing what we're supposed to. And it was just the other day, here again, same, same situation at the Four Corners on Maple Street. Mr. Small has a huge German Shepherd. That was in my backyard at one time. Loose, my dog and I are sitting out in the chair. I did speak to Mr. Small. He wasn't very receptive. I called Brian, notified him. Lo and behold, last week, I'm walking by with my dog. Here's Mr. Small with a great big German Shepherd, loose, and he's driving his lawnmower. And, you know, I just, there's no enforcement of the regulations, and we need to make people aware this isn't just a village situation. This is a whole town that has these laws and ordinances, but they're not being followed by anybody. So that's why I'm here tonight, and I hope we can come to some kind of, you know, system that works. And as I said, if Brian needs some help, you know, get him another helper. The police don't have time to do it. I mean, what are we to do, really? So I thank you for your time, and that's why I'm here tonight. Thanks, Pam. Go ahead, Buckley. Uh, I know we have a leash law in the town. My, my feeling is, you as a town have a leash law, and the dog goes up and bites her, or it hurts her real bad, she can sue the town. Yes. And that's going to come to that. Right. So you guys better wake up. What happened to my wife is never going to happen again. I can guarantee you. It's a good thing of people that other dogs dead, but those two dogs are dead now. You guys are open the door for a lawsuit. The world has changed. Thank you. You made the rule for a leash law, you better enforce it. I know these guys ain't going to do it, they ain't got time. They got too many yo yo's running around town, don't know, get in trouble. So. You're going to get, you're going to come today, you're going to be accepting, you're going to get a lawsuit. Is there ever any other elected position that could show up to these court hearings to follow through? And I think that's pretty sad. That Brian's had tickets for five years and not a one has been written. So I mean, come on here. What's what are we doing? So the last three or four years, I've had two assistants. Yeah. One was a town administrator, yeah. the other one was a zoning for administrator. So they were supposed to go and write the tickets. Well, because again, they can go because it's it's not working i know and i agree with you and maybe an assistant or or something i don't know how to do it I don't think because again to these dog complaints you're talking about they aren't five to eight at night they're 24 hours a day seven days a week well, I don't so you're if you're hiring a dog catcher you're gonna have to he's got to be be able to go the town's gonna have to figure that oh, out yeah. really because it's unsafe i mean i've had seven different attacks for untethered dogs and people are out in the yard washing their car the dog's loose i mean the dog's a dog they're gonna see their trigger and they're gonna react that's what a dog does mm -hmm. so i mean you can't blame it on the animals it all comes from the owners not being informed and just having a little you know, the three by three um, article in the newspaper isn't really cutting the mustard. I, I don't know. And if, if it is, there's no enforcement behind it. So I thank you. That's yeah. Nice I just want to say sorry for what happened. And um, thanks for bringing it to our attention. I think you're I think you're right on the money. I think we need to have a better um, ladder ladder of accountability, if you want to call it that. Maybe have an assistant or something. I know. 
You're you're absolutely right, Buckwheat. I mean, if, if uh, someone a dog gets I have to make it. You've never yeah. seen the end of it. Right, and I know that that most of the time the select board only gets involved if it's a vicious dog bite and a, and there's a vicious dog bite hearing, and the select board gets together and decides what to do. But there's a lot in between there, and being jumped on or being knocked down or being well, bitten. Jumped on, you Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. So I'm asking, this is just not acceptable. I agree. And. Um, there needs to be a follow-through plan. I agree, and I, if Brian Brian can't be at these things, and, and sometimes it takes him a couple right. days before he can return a phone call. I mean, it's just not enough of him to go around for the whole town. We so, nowadays too, you you can't find nobody. Right. You can't find a number in the phone book anymore. No, everybody's got cell phones. So when I come home from work, I get this complaint, and I have to go out on it and deal with it. Tonight, I was up in Mud City. I saw the dog. I found the dog. I think it belongs to somebody. Nobody home. So I come down here and I tried to find out it's not registered at that house if it belongs to them. So it might take me another two more days to get up there and find out. So I, I, there's a lot of things wrong, but all the years we've done this, we've got by pretty reasonably because most of them aren't bad things. Yeah, but one of these days it's going to happen, I'm sure. And I, yeah. I, and I agree. I agree, Buckley. Yeah. We need to do something. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, maybe we should we should make a plan and try to find some work with you, Brian, and try to find an assistant or someone that can can answer these calls in a timely fashion, work with law enforcement, or or make a better plan. I totally agree with you. I, and both you and Buckley. How about well, how do we now increase the awareness? Um, put something on front page for forum of the laws and the regulations. Right. And you know, not just this. We, I don't know right. how to do it. I'm not real good at that. And as I said, this isn't my position, but I mean right. the newspaper. I, I don't know. I'm gonna call another town, a couple of towns, and ask them what they do with the dogs with the continue this and about the the uh, Right. Well, I know they do a lot more like in Stowe, they do when I was involved with Stowe police, they, they had a dog officer that wrote tickets and was a lot more accountability and no pun intended, intended but something to sink teeth in here, a fine or a fine system where Brian can't do it. He's been on it for how many years? If he can't do it, Brian, right. he does what he can. He does what he can. Right. Right. I'm certainly so all the time you're sitting here saying how oh, the police don't have tons. See, I don't need it. Well, and that's what's happening. I mean, right. it's getting harder and harder to find the time to do it. Yeah, and I yeah. have I now does someone else have any thoughts? Jess, you have any thoughts or two of your Gary? I think well, I'm not quite sure what our ordinances say. I know we have a loose law and I don't know what else other ordinances are in there, but I think also what other be registered. Yeah. What other I popped my head into the uh, gals in there, and I think there's 500 and something popped in there, but I don't remember it so quickly at lunch that are registered, but that doesn't even count for all the dogs that are unregistered mm -hmm. running around. I mean, yeah, it's a sad situation right now. Well, we can certainly, we're not going to do anything tonight, obviously, but we can take a look at it and um, make some sort of uh, plan right. going forward where we, there's an escalation of and a fine system where people are held accountable. Like you said, it's not the dog's fault, it's the owner's fault. Sooner than later, I might yeah. because, you know, I shouldn't have to carry a shotgun around the room yeah. to walk the dog. Well, I, I feel the same way. I go I go walking on the lower arm mountain road and I get chased by dogs. I know Nina has too in the past. It's scary and, when you got yeah. a big dog and I'm trying to scoop up mine and you got the teeth and the dogs coming. I mean, come on. Right. This happened 40 years ago at my house when I used to live. My boys would walk down the street to go to school. And there was a dog right at the end of Maple Street hooked with a chain. Well, the chain wouldn't let the dog come out far enough to bite the boys. But it didn't matter. They're walking there and all of a sudden that dog comes running at them. Where did they go? Into the street. So I went down and I talked to them more times. They still do it. But... Yeah, I know. This is the yeah. thing. There's no, there's no follow through yeah. with it. I mean, you can say this and not the other, but there needs to be some resolution. That's all. Well, we'll so make a, we'll I make want to say one thing, though. I just do want to say I talked to the lady who owns a German Shepherd. Yeah, she's very nice. Did she talk to you? Oh, she's been in contact with me. But you know what, Brian? With a violent attack like that, 
and she has children. That's her own deal. But I don't know. Sorry, just is going to cut the mustard out. Okay. These great big dogs. You know, I don't want any hard feelings with her. I don't care. They're nice people. She knows my name. I know her. That's not the issue. The issue is the pan. She has a lot of children. And this is a recipe for disaster. I prayed, I don't know how many times that I walked by there, that dog didn't get loose. And by golly, yesterday morning was the morning. Yeah. yeah. And well, you could have been a young child you were walking well, with too or something. Yeah. Any lady, I've yeah. seen little kids walking dogs. I mean, it's yeah. just a recipe for disaster. It's not acceptable. But I just want to say, that she she's offered yeah. to fix by your she, coat. Yeah, she's going to buy okay. that. Yeah, but you know that's here, there, or whatever. Um, no, but I just wanted everybody yeah, to know that they just they didn't no, let their no, dog. No, no, okay. They're not bad people. At all. And the other I'm thing not, is, I've already sure. talked to Eric a little bit about my yeah. pro, you know what's yeah. happening. The town's changing. There's more dogs, and I'm sure there's a lot of unregistered dogs. So at some point, I was going to talk to him about changing. Something we need to we make a plan. Sure. We will make a plan. Yeah. So we have. I'm looking at the ordinance here, and I'm seeing this. So uh, talks about an impounding fee, and I don't even know if we have a place to impound dog. So we do. We do, but it looks like there might be uh, other steps that could be taken in here before you get to that that step. I don't know. That's where. Yeah, and sometimes if I could have a copy of that, I would appreciate yeah yeah but thanks for bringing it to our attention we certainly will do something about it thank you yeah i'm sorry that happened to you okay go ahead Hi there. Uh, yes, yeah, Shelly Severinghouse here. I um, wanted to add on to some of uh, Jamie's comments regarding the timing of the ATV vote. Um, it's certainly my position that having it at town meeting um, day where the most voter turnout will likely be uh, makes the most sense, especially seeing this is still going to be well ahead of the start of the ATV season. So still a couple of months ahead of that. Um, so that's certainly my position there. I also just have a question around the non-binding aspect. And if this is unique to this um, ATV vote, or if this is actually just standard practice for any townwide vote, just that the select board holds the kind of ultimate authority and that this non-binding isn't something that's just um, unique in this situation. So I just had a kind of clarifying question around that. Thanks. Yeah, I think... Uh... The first one, you've heard some of our comments about that, and I do, I do reflect what Gary said about, you know, we did promise folks that we were going to have this vote later on in the fall, and you know, I think we even said August or September at one point, and you know, we're waiting till December, and I just don't want to wait till next March, you know, regardless of when the season starts, you know, we've just got so many people that are, that want to know, they want to know now, put it to bed. But, and I feel responsible to have that because we told people what we're gonna do. And I'm like, what we said, we should do. But that's my opinion on that. And as far as the non-binding part, it's true, it's non-binding. And I think you find most cases when the town has the authority to do something, they just do it. They decide for yes or no to do it. And this case is different because all of us feel that there should be a poll taken by everybody to, to make that decision. You know, we could have made that decision without any of it. We decided to do it. So putting it out there and have it be a non-binding vote, that gives us an idea of how many people are really for ATVs and how many people are against it. And I'm willing to live with that, you know, whatever the result is. And uh, so are the ATV folks. I got one in the back of the room right there. And that's how you feel too, isn't it, Brent? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, that that's the non-binding part of it. And I think that's, uh, it is unusual to have an article like that and a vote made that's non-binding. Um, but I think this is a special case and the ATV vote is a special case, you know, it's a special issue. So I don't know if somebody else had any comment on that or. Um, well, I, I have a couple questions slash comments. Um, one is um, we haven't, the comment is we haven't made a decision about whether that article about the ATVs will be on the December 7th um, vote and it looks like now it's two, two and two for and two against because Gary's abstaining. Um, one, that's one. That's one statement. A question or clarifying question is: 
Um, from my understanding about um, in terms of the binding slash non-binding um, nature of the article um, was that we, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong or please clarify, um, we had guidance from our attorney um, around the wording of the article, is that correct? And we, we, um, we consulted with an attorney, an attorney and they told us that it wasn't the ATV issue wasn't something that that the town could have a final say on that was the select board's purview. Um, and I I am not I do not understand um, where the line is like in terms of what ordinances what types of ordinances the select board um, can um, can create laws and ordinances around without town input and what can I don't know where the line is but from my understanding. Um, that statement and that um, um, that course of action is because we had a, um, a meeting and um, and you know assistance from our attorney from Ver is it Vermont um, League of City and Towns or, no, or, or the attorney Jim Burke from Jim okay. Yeah. I don't say one more thing. Go ahead, Becky. Um, you know, I live over in Sunset Drive in the wintertime. <clears throat> we have several, several hundred snowmobiles that fly down by our site out in the field, which is probably 300 feet from <laughs> the roadway everybody complained about. And I hit I hit a four wheeler too. That doesn't bother me. Is that the snow machine they were closer to my house? And I think I sleep in the wintertime when I put the windows open, and I still hear that doesn't bother me. So, I'm not against the four wheelers anyway. I'm not against the homeless. It's a good time for everybody. Um, but can would you be able to clarify the aspect of the binding non-binding? Sarah can Sarah, Sarah can okay. So um ordinance are uh, the um the select board would set an ordinance. So um the ATV situation is a little different because Traditionally in a town, the select board would create an ordinance. You would pass the ordinance. And then if there were enough voters that didn't like the ordinance, then they would petition against what you wrote. So the select board has um, complete authority to write an ordinance. They do not need a vote in order to write it. Um, and um, Morristown doesn't have a charter, our charter is laid out in the original charter of uh, Vermont. And so Morristown has only voted so far to elect select board members by Australian ballot. All, and then um, by state statute, we also have to, if we're um, bonding or like large um, over five year money terms, we, ha we have to um, vote that by Australian ballot. But all other articles in Morristown are all for votes it wouldn't be an Australian ballot. And so in order to um, put something on the Australian ballot that is a question like this, um, it would have to be non-binding. It's just advice, advisory to the select board. It's just um, sort of like the poll, the survey that they were using um, last time because they do not need the authority of, of, from the voters in order to um, put it, to, to create that ordinance. They have the power in state statute to create it. If they do write that ordinance, if they write the ordinance, people can request a vote against the ordinance. You can, you can on petition, you would need 5% yeah. of the yeah. voter um, right. Right. To, to petition against it. And one other thing, Norm, when you said that it was connected with the, the ATV vote would be connected with the town, uh, the school board vote. At the time, we were under the assumption that the school board vote was going to be that town meeting day. Oh, so we didn't. We thought it would be much sooner. I thought it would be like in August or September. <laughs> that was our impression earlier on in the year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jamie, go ahead. Uh, so last meeting, um, I came away with the understanding that um, the town had received counsel on this matter. Um, council didn't necessarily agree with the way the town was going to move forward with this. And I think Eric was going to go back and, and speak with council. Um, I'm wondering if someone could provide some clarity on A, if we were going against what we were advised or the thought of council and where we stand now. 
what what Eric got was um, the wording for an article. Right. Um, it wasn't to, whether or not to have it or not. It's how it would read. It has to read a specific way legally. And so um, was, that was concerned by council in terms of the manner in which we were doing right. this ordinance. Go ahead, or, or the timing of, of what was taking place. Right. The council was mm -hmm. with the plan, sir, just said that typically the process is the board uses their authority to create the ordinance. Mm -hmm. The ordinance is posted, there's a 60 day window before it becomes in effect. And in that 60 days, the board has the ability to get the petition together to go against that. that uh, so then that throws in, once that petition is, is put in there, there's another timeline. And Kara's our, uh, Sarah. Sarah is our voting expert, so I don't want to kind of jump into her way too far. But once the petition is delivered with the perfect number of signatures, then she has a window that she holds to get another vote. So typically what the attorney is simply saying is you're you're doing a little different than most communities do. Typically your community would pass an ordinance, or your board would pass the ordinance, and then the community would respond either by letting it go through, or they would get a petition together to try and have a vote to counter. His concern was not necessarily not in the timeline mm -hmm. of it at all. It was just um he wanted to make sure that the select board knew that they were aware that they had total control to write an ordinance without um, getting voter input ahead of time. And that the course of action that they were taking was not traditional. Right. So we've been aware since the beginning that it was our, up to us to do it or not do it. We just decided to not do it. <clears throat> Let it get the poll first, you know, get the true, you know, feeling of what people want, whether it's 500 to 500 or, you know, 1,000 to 1. <clears throat> Any other questions about this? I, I'm going to bring something else up. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> belaboring this, um, but I'm sure it'll be asked. Um, based on what Sarah said, you um, all articles would generally be floor votes at town meeting. So um, is the does the question become if we save the ATV issue until town meeting, does this become something that can be voted on on the floor? I'll go back to um, the advice I got from the attorney is that it's a select, the select board has the power to make the ordinance. It's not a voter decision. If you want to survey the voters, non binding, you can't. You can ultimately you can do whatever you want, but the attorney just wanted me to make sure that you are aware that the decision lies with the five of you in creating or not creating an ordinance. I and think then, we're all aware. And then um, <clears throat> after the results, after that, then go to the voters to agree or not or disagree. Agree or not agree with the ordinance. With the ordinance. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm wondering about like Gary's. Gary said he's going to recuse himself from any votes, but not necessarily about the timing of a vote, you know, when it was going to be in December or or town meeting. You know, he said he's going to recuse because he's involved with, but that doesn't really tell you whether or not he's in, going to vote yes or no about ATVs, just oh. timing of the vote. Oh, yeah, no, I know. That's uh, thank you. For, for yeah. That. Yeah. So, anyway, is there any more discussion about this or any other community concerns? All right, we'll move to new business. First is signed conservation easement for 3.836 acres of land access off rail trail lane in North River Street. Oh, Todd is going to be on Zoom tonight. He's there. Hi, Todd. Hello, how's it going? Good. You want to tell us about this? Sure. This is uh, 3.8 acres is a the part of the conservation subdivision. It abuts Lake Lamoille. It's accessed from the rail trail and from the new development road. And basically, this is half of the development site where Nick Dons is building the 54 townhouses that he's going to break ground on in the next few days. That's what I thought. So really, this is what we get out of that. There's a lot of development. And I, I added a select board signature to this easement. We've gotten quite a few parcels and quite a few easements over the last few years. And I thought there should be more of a public component to it. So you actually vote to accept it before someone just deeds it to the town um, and a way to kind of celebrate, hey, we're getting this great conservation land. And it's a way to make the public aware of it as well too. 
Uh, it's also helps the select board members. Someone saying, oh, there's a lot of development. Like, well, there are, we need housing. And this is one of the great things that's happening because of all the development. We're getting this four acres of permanently protected open space. So there's both sides of the coin on that. Is there any reason it's negative to the town for us to not sign this easement? No, uh, no, there's no reason whatsoever. The signing is more really ceremonial, in my opinion. You gotta get that cat under control. It's the dogs are they start talking, they flock to me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't okay. know you could say, sorry. That's fine. Any questions for Todd? Nina, go ahead. Uh, do I understand correctly that this is conserved land? Correct. If you look, if you look at the easement language the board has in front of them, it states out the uses. It states that half of the 3.82 acres has to be permanently protected. Um, well, all has to be permanently protected. Half has to remain in its original state. The purposes are for recreation, uh, walking trails, hiking trails. Uh, there's stormwater conveyance is one of them in there, but it's basically for public benefit. That, um, that's my question too, Todd, because um, I'm reading in the third, um, the third body paragraph, um, like right here towards the end, um, that the, um, the purposes are establishing, maintaining, repairing, and replacing walking and hiking trails, open space, recreation, conservation, the installation, maintenance, repair, and replacement of stormwater treatment, um, so would that be related with like, um, would you, can you explain that? And also there's just a few things like, it's just saying like, um, general repair and maintenance of sewer lines, water lines, underground utility lines. Okay. That makes sense. But then it also says, uh, the installation, maintenance, repair, and replacement of paved roadway turnarounds, serving the project parcel, all is depicted on the plans approved by the DRB. So I just wanted to clarify that it does indeed mean open space and not like building new roads. Yeah, no, yeah. if you look at, if you look at the, um, if you ever look at the plan, I'm not sure if there's a plan yeah. in your package, the plan itself, yeah. there's a two stormwater basins. One uh, is a gravel wetland right up by Bridge Street. And there's another stormwater basement kind of more on the, uh, the bottom left of the plan. Mm -hmm. These conservation subdivision bylaw allows those stormwater treatments to be in the open space. And the turnaround part is the developer provided a couple parking spaces at the end of each road for people who want to park and use the trail system. And those oh, yeah. few parking spaces were allowed in the open space since they benefit the general public. Thanks, Todd. Anything else? Do I hear a motion regarding this? Yeah. And it is for it, it is open to the public as well as the residents. Is that correct? correct. Completely okay. open to the public. And so by this time next year, well, by probably July of next year, you'll be able to go to Lost Nation and cut down on the way back off the rail trail through the develop through the development and right down to Lake Lamoille, which would be pretty cool. Yeah. Someone have a motion? Make the motion we accept this conservation easement deed from uh, it's listed at 382 Street LLC. Yep. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Gary. Did the motion include having Bob sign on behalf of the board? Yes. Did it, Judy? Did. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number two, Lamoille River Tactical Basin Plan Presentation, LCPC. Oh, that's me. So at our last LCPC meeting, um, uh, ANR had presented uh, the uh, Lamoille River Watershed Tactical Basin Plan, and the, the LCPC board approved it. So I just wanted it, it to be for you to have that information. And on the last page, um, they have a, a, if you go on their website, and I didn't, um, it's not yellow anymore, but on um, page 20, there's a tiny URL that you can go on, you can see their, uh, the story map. Yeah. And 
And if you have any comments to make, there's an email address and also a, a snail mail address that you can find it over 12 with your comments yeah. on, um, on the train. That's great. Um, can we just say that URL? I know it's not, it's weird, but it's not too long. We just say it so people know. Sure. Okay. Do you want me, do you want me, um, HT, HTTPS colon um, slash slash t, uh, tin URL. So, oh, sorry, tiny URL. Um, t i n y u r l dot com uh, backslash y3 v w. I feel like I'm getting an eye exam. Um, Y3VWK65Z. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> 2020. I just got new glasses. I need, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> you pass. Thank you. That's great. And the select work package is that post publicly. Yes. On our website. So thank oh, great. You okay. Okay. Now, do you want to, there's no motion we have to make on this. It's no, I just said, yeah. Any questions for Judy on this? No, but I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, it's all available anyway. Yeah. All right. Next, we'll do Jane Campbell, Fibernet. Right, thank you. Welcome. Um, Screen sharing. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. And while we're waiting for the, the tech stuff, um, what I have here is maybe a little bit different than what you have in your packet. Um, it's just sort of a summary, a little bit of a look back at what we've done this year and some, a little bit of a look ahead. Um, just wanted to know where we are. Okay. Great, thank you. So, the Moyle Fire Net Communication Union District. Um, communication union districts were uh, enabled by the legislation a couple of years ago that allowed towns to band together to get high speed internet in their town. Um, the wildfire net, we are still committed to reliable, high speed, symmetrical internet, and we are not looking for profit. We are a community based organization. That's, that's the difference between us and some of the other providers out there. Um, since I last spoke with you, we added a new member, which is now a member of our district. We're just kind of like a solid waste district in a way. Um, and to be honest with you, we're, we're talking to um, <clears throat> some of the adjoining regions, the Dunmore, Waterbury, et cetera. We're just looking in some cases, it makes sense for our district to serve them, like we split them with some of the other CDs. So we're working cooperatively and trying to make the best use of the dollars that are out there. Um, we don't do this in a vacuum. LCPC has been very helpful at LEDC. I mean, it's, it's just the whole usual alphabet soup. Um, there is now also the Vermont Community Broadband Board that is overseeing the overview of what's happening in the state in terms of broadband internet with the CEDs and with other providers. Um, we've been around about a year, a little over a year. Uh, we've done the administrative setup. We are a uh, brand new executive director, Val Davis, is here. We started a little over a month ago. Uh, we did a feasibility study and a business plan, although um, we're about to do, because the landscape has changed so much uh, since that business plan was done, we're about to um, ask that some of our grant money can go to a more detailed business plan um, that will do more to show us where the unserved, underserved areas are and where the challenges are and where somebody's already built in their next so, um, We've done some of those full data collection. I cannot tell you how many steps there are before you construct fiber internet network. It's, it's amazing. Um, you have to get your, your full data. Every poll has to be visited in their 
15, 20 points of data that have to be collected. You get your full license application. Then you do what's called make ready, where everybody that has something on that poll has to go out and look at the poll and say, yep, this needs to be moved and the poll's tall enough or it's not tall enough. And it's just amazing. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of that, we call it uh, pre construction work, um, will be grant funded. Um, the grants that we have come from the American Rescue Plan Act, and those are directed toward the unserved and underserved. Um, and then we'll be able to, the plan you'll see in the next slide, is to use the grant funds to build the initial pockets of network to focus on those unserved and underserved people, which the feds uh, <clears throat> say that speeds of less than 25 over three is unserved or underserved. Those of us who are at 25, three might disagree. And they are about to, as I understand it, the federal government is starting to say, well, 100 over 100 really are the speeds everybody needs. And 100 over 100 is what we're seeing is the minimum speed we are aiming for with fiber network. And one of the reasons all the CDGs like ours are going to fiber is because it is higher speed than what you can put through copper. So we're in the process. We submitted an RFP about five months ago asking, uh, sent it to 75 different entities to see who was interested in helping us be a partner for construction or to be the internet service provider. Um, we're just about, I think, probably in the next month or so, going to sign at least one partnership agreement, maybe more. Um, and then we will do that updated high level business plan with our partner. And we'll go back to the DCDD, Vermont Community Broadband Board, and ask for grant funding for the next steps of pre construction, all those gazillion steps I was talking about. Um, and then uh, we'll get to the point where hoping it's the like summer of 2022, where we'll be able to really start the construction. Um, one thing we're running into is that all these rural areas across the country are doing the same thing we're doing. And so everybody's trying to buy fiber at the same time. Everybody's aiming to hire that specialized labor force at the same time. Uh, the prices are going up like minute by minute. It's, so we all feel this sense of urgency to get in there and make the best use of these grant dollars that we have. Um, as you can see in this slide, we're assuming that we'll be able to initially with those grant dollars build an asset base that then we can leverage to get financing to finish the rest of the addresses. Um, what's been happening is one of the reasons the legislature started allowing CDs is they, you know, the providers that were existing just didn't see enough profit from the rural areas like ours. There just wasn't enough population. Our mission is to serve all the E911 addresses. So we're hoping to go into those areas that are the higher revenue areas, a little bit more population, get that money, and then make sure that all the other addresses um, get served. In some cases, we have providers that are um, in our district building, going to the populated areas and then moving onto the next populated area and onto the next. And we're trying to open conversations with them with our grant funding saying, okay, in the area you're building, before you jump to the next area, how can we use our leverage and help you not skip all those addresses that are maybe a little bit less profit? Um, so 2021 funding, we still had a little left over of our Vermont Community Foundation grant that was initially 20,000. Um, we were fortunate with LTPC to get a $30,000 USDA RBDG grant, and LDDC and LCPC both offered matching support for that. And then we're working on the grant um, that is primarily federal funds that have flown through the, the, the state, state grants, about 120,000. Um, that should vary through the end of this year and um, has to be obligated by the end of this year. And then we'll be looking for another grant in 2022 from the BCDB state that will also be federal funds to do the, the pre construction work I'm talking about. Um, we hope by fourth quarter 2022 that we'll actually start having customers. You know, all together, our district without those extra areas um, is about 500 miles. And uh, right now, our estimate is it costs about 45,000 a mile um, to, to build a fiber network and you know, start to finish. 
Um, so we're assuming that by the end of 2022, we'll have about 80 miles done that will again be focusing on those unserved, underserved folks. Uh, the total budget for 2022 is about 3.9 million. Most of it is, um, you know, those, those pre-construction and construction costs. Um, as we're doing this, and there is that sense of urgency to get in the high revenue areas and get the fiber and, and the labor force as soon as we can, there are um, other providers building in our district, that, again, taking those higher revenue areas. So we're competing with them, we're competing with people all across the country. Um, I already mentioned that. This talks about, and I'm sure you've already looked at this, the American Rescue Plan Act funding, ARPA. It, um, there are a lot of things that the town can use it for. Um, one thing I'd like to say tonight is if you decide to use some of the broadband, I hope you'll come to us because we are the, the ones that are trying to reach all E911 addresses. We, we don't want to make a profit. We just want to serve all the addresses in our district. Um, if you do decide to fund broadband and you, you come to us, um, I think I've said that you know we're here to serve all the addresses and we're committed to broadband internet that's symmetrical. This gets into the sort of jargon, but you know, there are the download speeds that everybody talks about, but the upload speeds, especially if you're a business or you're in the world of education and you're sending documents or images up into the cloud. Um, that's just as important as the download speed, and that's why we keep emphasizing the symmetrical aspect of it. And if you do decide to fund broadband and you work with us, you'll still have that local voice, and and uh, we will be the ones in the end owning the network. Um, you'll hear lots of millions of dollars. Um, you know, there's 150 million of the state right now that is out there possible for pre-construction construction funding. It sounds like a huge, it is a huge amount. But when we look at our initial business plan, uh, said that just for our district, this was without the bullet, it would be 25 million to build this network. And prices have gone up since then. Um, so we will feel lucky even if we can get half of that in grants and then do the financing. So yes, there's a lot of money out there, but every grant dollar that we can get is going to make it more affordable in the end for the folks in our community. Um, I think that's it for my pictures, but I'm happy to take your questions. Go ahead, Jamie. I have a question. Has FiberNet spoken with more so water and light? In terms of the smart meter project that they've got going on with NETSA um, and their data collector units, which I'm assuming now are probably playing in cellular. Have you thought about speaking with more to the water and light? No, that's prioritize that to be able to feed their data collector units with our. We have not spoken with them directly yet, but we're working with LCPC who is working to get data mm -hmm. for us through uh, out the GIS data. Um, I'm not even aware of what data Morrisville has on, on its polls at this point, mm -hmm. but we will. Okay. I mean, because my feeling is, I mean, you know, the project that I'm I'm working on, right? Um, <clears throat> and and the backhaul for the data collector unit for smart meters is, is coming over cellular, but certainly fiber is going to be much faster. Right. Um, yes. And in in rural Malone County and such, if you had a way of prioritizing, you know, or working with more of the water and light. To get fiber to where they were going to be putting their data collectors, that would be severely other things. Yeah, huge for all the electric companies. You know, the see where I was before I started this. We've got sub substations galore, and about half of them are connected directly. The rest are on radio or cell, and it's a real problem. So anywhere that we can provide access for you guys as well, well, we'll have the strength. It, it might not be the first one because the grant funding says we really focus on the unserved and reserved classes, but it's, it's important certainly our thing. Yeah. Well, this, this, yeah. this, we'll talk about that later, but they could actually have the simultaneous way that this we're going to be, you know, we'll have spare pairs for that. So they can be developing their connectivity while we're building out. Yeah, I should have mentioned that by the time this whole network is built, it's really going to be a standard for emergency services 
the utility is better. Yeah. Right. Are there other questions? No. Any questions for Jane? I have a question, but I don't think it's, I don't know if it's very relevant. I'm just thinking about places like Poplar Terrace and the manor that they don't have a lot of access. Is this part of the process too? Um, right now, it, that, that is a good question. It, it is relevant because um, we're so focused right now on building the network so that it's there for people. And I'm pretty sure the next step is going to be helping people get access and learning how to use it because not everybody, when they say, oh, go online, you know, there, there's going to be training needed and community training needed. But that's you know, that's talked about that. this at the CED level, but I think that's probably going to be set too. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any um, other questions? Just a, um, a point of clarification for myself. Um, you said that if we go with um, the metal fiber net, then we retain um, local control. I'm just curious, like, what does that look like? I mean, I think I understand, but just, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, that, that's a good point. I don't think I emphasize that. In the end, yes, we're aligning the partners for construction and internet service, et cetera. In the end, we will own the net. We mm -hmm. will operate the mm -hmm. um, And we are a district where each town has a representative on our board. And most of that is on the board. So that's what I mean by there's a community voice and there's that community ownership piece, regardless of what partner we end up with. We're going to end up owning the network. There's so two representatives per town, right? Pardon? Two representatives per town. Uh, one rep and one alternate. Don okay. Myers is the alternate on the Okay. Thank you very much, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Jane? Thank you for the presentation. Thanks for coming yeah, out. Thanks for your time. All right, next, sign the warning for December 7th special meeting. So in front of us here. Yes, please, Sarah. So, um, I, I started at the Board of Civil Authority um, meeting that we had last week. Um, I got the long one. Um, the long one. Yeah. I, um, I got information from the Secretary of State's office. It took a little bit, and Mr. Bland is correct. Um, we do not have to do what Elmore does for this particular vote. It has its own set of rules. And um, we can, you can choose um, if you want to mail everybody your ballots or um, or not. Um, you don't have to follow suit for one homework, and so did. Um, the other thing that came up at the Board of Civil Authority meeting was um, the BCA sets the location of the meeting, and um, they have decided to move it to the VFW instead of having it here for the bigger space. And the VFW um, has confirmed uh, it's available for our use. And so this draft, the location is different from the draft that was presented two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we want to do is decide. We know we're going to have the first article. Does that? Decide which articles are going to be on there and then decide if we're going to mail them out. My opinion is if we have these multiple important articles on this vote, that we should mail them out to every, every voter. That's my opinion. And then we have to decide if we're doing that if we're paying postage. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Again, could you review the cost, Sarah? Yeah, I mean, it's they're just guests. Um, I'm guessing it's between nine and ten thousand to mail everybody their ballot. We have returned posted between six and seven thousand to mail everybody their ballot, um, but not including return postage. And probably about twenty five hundred if um, you don't mail everybody their ballot, and three hundred voters were um, requested us to mail them. Right, you don't you don't mail everybody a ballot, but you say anyone that can 
Anyone who wants to can request it. Yes. And, and I, you're guessing I just, 300. I just threw in a number for budgeting purposes. Right. And then, um, Sarah, can you re re reiterate, I think probably for the third time in three weeks, um, what was the voter turnout last town meeting um, with the mailed um, postage paid ballots versus normal town meeting? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I had to go get the folder last time. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, right it's right on my desk. Do you want me to get it? Yeah, sorry. I think it's an important piece of information. I think we should vote on that before we even vote on the radicals. Yeah, because I do too. My intention tonight was to make a motion to send them out to everybody, mm -hmm. oh, no okay. matter what's on it. Okay. That way we get our better turnout. Yeah. Well, the question is posted, paid, coming back. You know. I, yeah, we don't have to do that. That's what I think. So. All those stamps, what fifty-five cents? I know. Fifty cents. And then does that build another barrier for people getting it back in? So typically um, it's about 16 to 17% turnout. And last year it was 35 with mailing 35%. Um, typically it's around 600. And last year was 1,458. And that was mailing everybody their ballot um, postage paid return on board. It, it's it's good data. It's just that the elections are the voting is different. One was a presidential election, right? Mm -hmm. Um, last year wasn't presidential. That was um just the normal town meeting. Yeah, there wasn't November. That was okay. And before. school, the school budget. All right. Brian, you got a question? So I know last year my wife and I went with that one in our mailbox. Um, but the lady that stayed with us did. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would be wondering, I own the house. Now we want to get around the um, taxpayer. Confirm with me. I will check and make sure that you and your wife are registered to vote. Oh, we're registered to vote in town work now. So I guess my concern is, is that as soon as you say 18 weeks, Everybody's going to come out of the work that you hate them or what you love them. I think, I as a taxpayer, I think we've been wasting money to send everybody a, a, a ballot. ballot in the stamp as well to return. Because as soon as you, as soon as you see ATVs, you yeah, see everybody show up out of the woods. So, Nina, you had a comment? Well, I was wondering if the money it is was put into the budget for this vote. No. No. I'm inclined to agree that uh, if we don't have the money, then we can't spend it. And that um, people will vote. Well, we're having a town meeting whether or not we vote on ATVs. We're going to be spending the money. It's whether or not we send out the ballots. Right. And my thoughts are because we hear so much slack about things by us sending out the ballots nobody can say they didn't get a ballot or if they did they can know this year to check make sure what i mean i know what happened i heard all kinds of horror stories about mailing out ballots i heard dead people got them things like that so i just think to cover us and make it as fair as we can is to try to mail everybody out a ballot and uh, again, they don't have to, to stand back because, like you said, they may not send it in. They have some ways of getting it back. They can drop in the box. Uh, drop in the box, mail it, or they can bring it in and put it in the machine. Or they can come here and vote. Right. That's all they can still come and vote. They, that's giving them the options themselves. Mm -hmm. Frank, you got another comment? March or are you talking about December? December. December 7th. For now. That's what we're talking about right now. December 7th. March. I know. Yeah. Right. Right. No, yeah. I, I think the confusion. I was confused about this too. They're calling it a town meeting, but that's a, an election. Yeah. Is that where you, because I thought the same thing last week. What do you mean, town meeting? But you call it, you also call this of uh, the December 7th. Vote a town. Meeting. It's not. Is that correct? It's a it's a town vote. A this town is a vote. warning for okay. a town vote. 
Special, okay. special meeting. Special, special meeting, yes. Special vote, yes. Yes. There's a special meeting in the town. A special yeah. meeting, yeah. yeah. Is that where you were confused, maybe? Yeah, I was confused. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Becca. I just think you're making a lot of money. People don't want it, they'll go vote. The people who don't want it, they're going to go vote. The people that don't care, they're just going to throw it back. They're going to throw your money away. I see it. I know how to drink, so. My eyes shine and everything goes with anybody. I just don't think people don't care. Well, yeah. And the price of fuel and all this stuff, when it's escalated, they're going to say, screw this, I ain't going to do that. Well, that's it. You have we have to do our due diligence. We, you know, people don't vote in a lot of elections or a lot of votes. You know, they don't. You have what fifteen percent, twenty percent, or whatever for the turnout. You know, you're you're lucky if you get you know a certain number. Like people go to town meeting, there's what two hundred and six people, the last one or something. You know, and we make decisions for millions of dollars at town meeting. Yeah. No. I agree with you, Buckley. You're probably right. A lot of people are going to throw it away. But I tell you, since I've been in here, you can't make everybody happy. So our job is to do our best. Try to do our best, too. Somebody can't say we didn't try. Matt, I want to ask you a question about um, the article about the cannabis. Uh, and what is the. Uh, uh, you have the article. You have the warning. Yeah. I'm just yeah. curious. So, if it's if we wait until March and it's a positive vote for you, what's the impact if we wait till then? Um, it puts us puts us three about four months behind doing work on the building that we're going to work out with as far as getting everything set and security and everything we need to be up to code. For what we're trying to do. So, the difference between December and March is four months of work that we could be doing on the location. And then permitting and, and so on and so forth, other things along the lines, but it's basically getting the building. Correct. Yes. I have a question. If we don't pass these the way they are, it means we wait two more weeks to come back with another one? No, we have no. to do that tonight. No, we got to decide. We're asking to decide what, whatever the content of the warning is. So tonight we have to meet the first deadline in order to get back. I thought so, but yeah. I didn't know maybe. You can't go home until we decide. I know. Yes. Well, I think we should we should decide about you no, know, are we gonna send them to every house or every taxpayer? How we're gonna do it without postage, with postage. Say nothing about the articles. Let's decide okay. first about so I'll make a motion. Well, to send them out to everybody, every registered voter, no, no postage. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Well, sorry. Um, are we going to discuss after? Well, okay. Yeah, you discuss everything. Okay. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Um, I. I'm not 100% on no postage um, because the difference I'm looking at is between $3,000. $3, um, I think it's about, it's, it's more like 2000 Okay. I mean, I know if we're going to go to all the trouble of mailing them out, I just know so many people will fill them out and put them in their mailbox and put the flag up versus like that extra step. I'm going to the post office, waiting in line. I know that's not a big deal. It should not be a big deal, but I know that's going to be a barrier. For some, for some it might be. Yeah. I'll bring them all back to you. You're going to go pick them all up, don't we? I mean, I know there's also going to be a drop box, you know, and I, I'm of two minds. You don't want to have to dumb everything down too much. You know, people should be motivated to vote, but um, these are all such huge issues. In my opinion, I'd like to see as many people weighing in as possible. If that means another two grand, and for already to mail them out, I, I'd say it's pay, pay the postage. Okay. I honestly would be all right putting that in my motion because I want this thing done. Yeah. Did you well, want? Do you want? To, do you want to amend your motion, Brian? Huh? Do you amend want to amend your motion? So I amend the motion to send out the ballots with postage, and then Bob will pay the postage. No, I mean. <laughs> 
part of your paycheck. <laughs> Did you second that, Judy? Yes. Okay, so now we have a motion to send the ballots out to every taxpayer post is paid. Yes. Not done. Right, right. right. Sorry. Thanks for clarifying. So that's the motion we have. Is there any further discussion about that? Mr. Nolan, you're, you're quiet over there. Usually. Um, now the motion is to send it out to every registered voter with a return stamp and vote. That's right. I, I agree with Buckwheat. I, I think we'll get as much of a return if we don't mail them out, as we will if we do. I think the, I know we got a lot better return last year than normal, but I think a lot of it was due to COVID. People didn't want to come out. Uh, I took mine, I filled it out at home and I took it over and put it in the ballot box. So, um, actually I didn't, I didn't even bring mine from home. I filled out one at, uh, at the BFW and put it in the ballot box. And I, I think if people are passionate about any one of these articles, which they, I think there's enough different subject uh, matter. different different sets of issues here that we're going to corral a lot of people um, that you wouldn't normally that you wouldn't normally get by uh, by having such a varied uh, ballot here and I, I think people will come and vote and I think ten thousand dollars is um, I'm not going to say it's a complete waste but now is that Ten thousand over and above the cost of the ballots. No, that that includes it's that's the bulk of it. It's like that's that, everything. It's like three thousand to mail everybody ballots. It's like two thousand to um, for the return postage because it weighs less, so it's cheaper to return than to mail. And right. then it's ballot. It's buying buying ballot, the ballots, and because um of the time. Like it's expedited shipping to get the ballots back from the printing company to get it here in time to mail out. The, the bulk of the cost is the ballots, and then so we got to gotta, we got to print the ballots anyway. And you have to have more ballots at the voting at the mm -hmm. polls because people will forget. So that's more another extra expense. Okay, so, so the added, I just wanted the added expense to mailing these out would be. 3,000 or 5,000 if you add the return post. Um, there's, sorry. Go ahead. Um, another concern was raised um, during the BCA meeting. Um, and it sounds like, Sarah, you addressed this by checking in with. Um, our attorney, but that there is a concern that if we didn't um, mail out, um, if we didn't do our election in the, a similar way as, or the same way as Elmore by mailing out postage paid ballots that we could open ourselves up potentially for, um, for um, litigation. Yeah, that was something that was expressed by a concern of an individual BCA member. Yeah. I had checked in with, um, the Secretary of State's office and got the guidance before the BCA okay. meeting. Um, and they were the ones that said that we didn't, we um, statute read that we did not have to um, mail them in the same way. Okay. I didn't reach out after right, the BCA yeah. meeting. Right. Okay. okay, is there any further discussion on this motion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Me. I say aye. So it's three two. Motion to pass. So we're gonna mail every mail every ballot post is paid. All right. So now we're gonna decide which articles we want to have on this ballot. First one. Hey, Buckley, you want to leave? Because we're going to appoint you a tree warden if you're Yeah, gone. don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Buckley. All right, this article one. 
Um, is this how we want to have it read? Is this is all these articles were, were drawn up and reviewed by our attorney, correct? Yes. So we don't really need to change anything on the article. They were, they were drawn up by Sarah. Okay. They were reviewed by the attorney. Okay. So this is how they should read. It's just a matter of having them all on there or pick and choose which ones aren't. Correct. Right? Okay. I, uh, um, yeah, the attorney um, helped me add in the legal. Um, Jargon. Yeah. Verbiage. The only one I would, I would recommend if you're going to keep article one, two, and three, you do not change the wordings on that. Um, if you're going to keep article four about the ATVs, I think you um, can change the locate the, the road street locations, but the, the wording of itself with right. the legal citations, I would not recommend. Right. Okay. So, Article One, you guys all agree we're going to have that on there, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. Article Two: Shall the town authorize cannabis retailers in town pursuant to Seven BSA Eight Sixty Three? Okay. Yes. Yep. Article three, shall the town authorize retail portions of cannabis integrated licensee operations in town pursuant 7 BSA 863? Yes. 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 Okay, so we're in agreement on the first two. Now, or first, first three, first sorry. Three. I don't think you would have to put retail on the second one, right? Because the point was to separate retail and integrated licenses. So the second one would read just integrated licenses, not retail and integrated licenses. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. I have verbiage that my lawyers can do. Yes, that's right. Well, it sounds like we're happy with one, two, and three. Uh, yeah. As long, yeah, be, and it'll just um, require people educating themselves around what two and three mean. Right. Yeah. And that'll be in the well, information. Well, actually, one, two, one, two, and three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All three of them. Yeah. And so, Article Four. How does everyone feel about it? I, I would rather not be on there on the December seventh. Um, okay. And Jess, you feel the same. Right. And yeah. Brian, you feel it should. I think it should. And I feel it should. So Gary, I know you said you're not going to vote about ATVs, but I'm thinking as far as the timing of a vote, you can vote on, you can decide on. Well, it's a matter of timing. It doesn't matter. It's not pro or con in ATVs. It's about well, it could be vote. construed that way, maybe. Yeah. What do you think, Judy? I think Gary can can weigh in. Well, if everybody's comfortable with, with me weighing in, I'd prefer to have it on the ballot. <laughs> are you, Brian, are you comfortable having him on? I, he said he was going to oh, yeah. recuse himself. Yes. You know, if we were going to vote on ATVs, he's yeah. going to recuse himself. I said right along, as far as I'm concerned, Gary should vote. Because conflict of interest means he's putting money in his pocket. You know, That's something true. like that. When you have a monetary gain. Yeah, monetary yeah. gain. So, yeah. But he's not going to vote on the ATV. But he, I don't think what he's voting on tonight has anything to do. It's just a time. Right. When yeah. to have the vote. And well, mine, I go back to what I've said twice tonight. I think we, we owe it to the people that have been waiting a long time. We told them, all of us up here on the board told them that we were going to have it this fall. We didn't say we we're going to have it next town meeting. You know, eight months from when that was, we said we we're going to do it this fall. And I want to be able to stand up to that. And say yes, we did. That's why. That's why I'm saying we should have it on December seventh. That's still later than what we promised people, or what we thought it was going to be. You understand, Tom? Yes, I do. And I, I appreciate you being here tonight. But you understand what I'm where I'm coming from? I do. I appreciate the fact that we're here tonight. You too, Don. I agree with Tom. The fact that you're bailing them out, the term ballot makes a big difference. Thank you. Okay. So, do you want to have a vote on that? I guess we all know how we feel. I know you. Do you want to have a vote? Sure. Is there a motion to have all these articles on there? The, the motion would be to either approve the, the, warning, the, as, the warning as presented or to not. Right. So, 
Yeah. So I make a motion we approve it as formed. Okay. And do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on this morning? Yeah, sorry. Um, I apologize. I'm trying to raise my hand. Can't find it on the app. This okay. is Jeff. Jeff? Yep, thanks. It's Jeff Egan. Um, so I know I put it in the chat, but I just want to put it verbally. Um, just as an opinion, you know, you all will do what you're gonna do. I'm not comfortable with Gary voting on the date in that I do think the early vote, the December vote is biased uh, based on the holiday seasons and the amount of business people have. I would like it to be held at the town meeting. So I just, I don't think it's appropriate that Gary's voting on this part of the decision, but just putting it out there, it's on the record. So how do we, how do we decide if it's two to two and Gary doesn't vote, even though it's not <coughs> making a decision about ATVs, just when the vote is, how do we decide, you know, who says, we're going to have it on there. Well, does Eric break a vote? Who do, I no, don't Eric doesn't vote. He's town minister. <laughs> <laughs> Eric never votes. That's why he ran for zoning. <laughs> That's right. Town administrator, so he didn't have to vote. <clears throat> but I don't think Gary, or Gary voting, it doesn't, he's not, um, he's not for or against. Right. No, that's what I mean. It's, he's just saying that keep it on for that date. That's right. what he's saying. So you agree with that? I agree with it, yeah. I'm I'm on the fence. I I don't agree with it, but I'm one person, so that's fine. And I, I that's you're okay. entitled to your yeah. opinion. I respect yeah. that. Yeah, I do. Go ahead, Brian. I've been uh, moving up this town now from forty six years, and with a town meeting since. Uh, because we hired a grasshopper. And I remember when the place used to be full. Um, for the last 10 to 15 years, you see it dwindling because every time that something gets argued, nobody wants to sit there and wants to argue about something. It's got to be proactive. You always need to be always negative against something. It's supposed to be proactive. And uh, I've seen it just go down and down and down and down. And uh, whether you have it in December, whether you have it in March, but you're going to have the same amount of people is going to be voting then. Right. I, I agree too. I mean, you, you know, those decisions are made by the people that show up. And like I said, it's just over 200 people last year, as I recall, when you've got 5,300 people that live in Morristown. <laughs> There were, it was so crammed in there, you had to like sit like this. You're with saying two years ago, because last year, 35% of people voted. Right. This is vote. This is Australian ballot. This is right. not right. people at town meeting. He's talking about people that go right. to town meeting. Yeah. We're talking about the numbers of people that go to town meeting. Right. I've seen it shrink. I've, yeah. I've lived here my whole life, too. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it get the tiny, tiny percentage. But we, we, we make decisions on millions of dollars for the town. And people just saying, hey, go for it. Anyhow, so all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Three to two in favor of. It passed. As presented. Can I make a request? Yes. Um, so I, I'm going to do everything I can to legally um, publish about it and um, put it out on social media. And one person can everybody here help if you're for or against whatever, just help spread the word about it. And yeah, um, it doesn't matter for or against. Just try to get the word to help. And um, now that they voted, everybody can get um, will be mailed their ballot. People can choose to. Um, vote that at home and mail it back to us. They can vote it at home, return it to us. They can um, vote at home, put it in the drop box that's 24 hours um, locked. Or they can also vote it at home, complete it, bring it to the polling place, and um, run it through the tabulator themselves. There's or they can just come in person and do the whole thing here. 
At the VFW. <laughs> At the VFW, right. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I just um, I just want to be clear on what Article 3 is trying to say here. I just want you to know what I'm thinking. Because we're voting on retailers and we're voting on integrated licensees. This says authorized retail portions of cannabis integrated licenses. An integrated license is going to be a cultivator, a processor, a manufacturer. That's not retail. They'll wholesale to retailers, to people like me, but that's not. I'm confused on what the retail portions part so, means because integrated yeah. licenses aren't going to be retail. And it's kind of important in this scenario because retail is where the 20% excess tax is. So you'd like to see Article 3 amended as we're going to? Correct. We, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we take out that. take out re retail portions of and Shall just the say, town authorize integrated cannabis licensee operations in town pursuant to same thing with top one I just don't think you need to have retail portions in there. Integrated cannabis because so scratch retail portions of just have to say authorized cannabis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can yeah, we? That might have been something that the town attorney specifically wrote in. I'm not sure. You can ask, but in my can opinion, I go check yeah. My email? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we we can make that amendment to it. So you know what I'm thinking. In sure. My opinion, it's very nice Let's make sure it's not a recommendation by our legal. Yeah. But that if Article Two goes down, and Article Three does not as written, then it's the same as. Passing Article Two. If Article Two does not pass and Article Three passes as, as written, read, then it's the same as passing Article Two, isn't it? No, it's different. Thanks for coming. Kind of like Article Three doesn't make any sense in the name of the statute. I mean, retail, the thing is, the retail portions. The retail doesn't, doesn't make sense. With it. It's conflicted. Right. It's conflicted. It's like redundant. I understand what you're saying. Redundant. Think the retail portions before integrated is implying that these integrated licenses are going to have a retail portion to them, uh, which they can if they get a retail license. Sorry. But you're not going to have. Well, let's let's okay. figure that out. I think what you'll find is this that is written that way. Just as breweries have tasting notes, they are manufacturing beer, and then they also have the, the ability to retail their product on the front store, like Rocker. I think that is the intent of the language. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be. That's we don't know if that's going to be allowed yet, though. Well, that's the language. That language is verbatim. <coughs> from it, what we have seen other communities pass, and that is what we are explaining by the just well, let's check um, on that. Yeah, I'm not no. opposed to how if it's supposed to be written that way. I just want to tell you how I think why it's going to be. So I actually think so. We have the article from Johnson right here, and it reads: "Shall the voters approve the establishment and operation of integrated licensees within the town of Johnson, subject to the regulation by the Vermont Cannabis Control Board?" That would that would be our as I think as Matt's suggesting that would be our number three. Yeah. And our number two would be, shall the voters approve the establishment and operation of cannabis retailers within the town of Johnson right. or town of Morrisville. Right. Um, and so we were choosing to split those in two. We also had the option to just vote on one article and we're choosing specifically to split retailers and um distrib like the um integrated and cultiv 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 cultivators Which, uh, you know we, we hold an informational meeting we have to do for this i mean i don't see i don't have an issue with separate <coughs> i don't have an okay. issue together either, well let's check with our attorney and then we can figure out we can amend this before right. yeah okay. does that sound good everyone yeah. well she's going to need to amend this time right mm -hmm. yeah yes. emailing Jim I, I like she, Eric said, though, um it adds more um, anyway, confusion. So it doesn't have to come back again for a vote. This is That's your a, warning. <laughs> I, all I can do is provide the information. Right. Provide yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it, that makes it seems to make sense. Yeah. So you're saying that the reason Article Three is written that way is because it would be as if the um, the grow operation had a tasting room. That, that's so, what was explained to me. So then it seems like then we'd have to have another article just saying authorizing um, cultivators um, separately. That would be, be later. If this passed right. as written, what Eric is stating would be that, let's say, 
a cannabis offer, uh, integrated licensing would be able to have a tasting room, mm -hmm. per se. But if, if that isn't in there, then they would be prohibited. And I think that there's a timeline here by the state that these have to be in place by a certain time. We can't go back and revisit them. Right. Is that correct? I believe so. And so if you look, I'm referencing mostly the October 15th report that the mm -hmm. Kansas Bill Board put out. So you may be talking to people who know uh, more than I do at this point. From my understanding, the cultivators being able to sell um, on their property was something that was being discussed, but not something that had been decided on yet. Um, because I know they don't like Maine legalized years ago and they only just made it legal for cultivators to start selling. They call it like farmers market right. style. Um, so my understanding was that wasn't passing right away, but again, maybe you're, you're talking to somebody I don't know. Um, yeah. well, I'll have to wait and uh, hear back, see if we hear back. And this is the VL, VLCT model policy, this is something mm -hmm. different. Which yeah, is, I that too. You did. Okay. Do you want to read that? So that's that one has two choices. The VLCT one. So the town authorized cannabis re retailer in town pursuant to another title. And shall the town authorize integrated licenses in town pursuant to da 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 da. Or you can combine it into one. So the um the advice from the town attorney was um, voters may not know what retail portions of integrated license operations refers to cannabis, adding cannabis clarifies this. So his suggestion is merely to add the word cannabis and not retail portions. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily need to be the retail. It could be the VLCC one, but just. Sorry, that's not what I from. What, what was it that you were suggesting that? To drop the retail portions of on the Article 3. Shall the town authorize integrated license? Cannabis integrated license. Cannabis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shall the town authorize cannabis integrated license? The, the operation in town pursuant. Yeah. Yeah. The way I'm reading this, it's like we're not even approving the integrated licenses. We're approving integrated licenses to have a retail portion, which may happen eventually, but I don't think that's a, I don't think it is. So that article may not be correct. Yeah, I'm thinking that how Matt's suggesting it, you could amend. Amend, take, amend get rid of those three. I, I actually have it up on my um, computer to change and bring back to the sign. Because I need to sign today, especially if. So you changed that on there? No, I'll, I'll go do it. Okay. Do you guys have a problem taking those three words out? Are we, are we, we keeping okay to the do? word operation still in it? Yeah. Okay. I could so we just take, portions. get rid, just scratch, yeah. retail portions of. Okay. And I'm substituting those three words for the word cannabis. Well, cannabis is there. Cannabis is already there. In Article 3? Yeah. Article yes. 3, yeah. Oh, maybe I'm reading a different version. I've got this one. <laughs> this one. The one we got says uh, cannabis. Okay. Cannabis is there. Because I'm reading an old version. So we have to make a motion to amend it. Make a motion that we amend Article 3 to read Shall the town authorize cannabis integrated license operations? In towns pursuant to 7 BSA section 863. Second. I have a motion by Gary and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion is passed. Judy voting. Nick. Now, do we have to do something with what we approved earlier? I don't believe so. I think the intent is clear here. Yeah. I think it would be redundant to have a vote to accept a warrant again. I think we've made the amendment to it. Right. Given that's what you wanted to do. So. What do you think, Richard? Is that correct? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're here. You can help us a little bit, right? I'm not in the Thank you. All right. So let's do the next one. Approve the sign errors and omissions. 
this was uh, someone across because we got notified by the uh, Housing and Development folks' defense that we were trying to tax their property. They didn't like that. So, Terry um, has, uh, has changed this uh, from the value of $270,000 to zero. Which is just Where is this place? Is it on the street? Yeah, it's on the street. Yeah. Is that across from um, Maplefield? Um, it's on Cross Street. It oh. Actually, um, it came up because we, we uh, put them up for tax sale, and then the attorney was like, oh, you can't tax sale the U.S. Okay. And um, because the back taxes were in a different um, tax name, but currently the U.S. the U.S. government has currently got it. So, so the Secretary so, of Housing and Urban Development owns a piece of property in our town. Basically, they foreclosed. Yeah. Oh, they foreclosed a piece of property. Oh, uh, All right. I'll make a motion we approve the errors and admissions. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, discuss tree warden position. Who wants to give that a go? I move we nominate Buckley for tree warden. <laughs> I'll second that. I like that. I do not agree. I have I no respect, no disrespect to that great. <laughs> okay, how do you want to proceed with this then? Um, I was in discussion with um, Eric a bit about where to go from here. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure where we left it. Um, do we just need to write up a job description and then put it out to the public? I know we had a few names. You gave me, um, you gave me Corey Hathaway's name. And yeah. Yeah, we can show what else. It's, it's a it's a vacancy within the town. We have, we have a couple other vacancies that yeah. we filled the town meeting. They're you know, voted on annually. Uh, I know the council position is voted annually at town meeting. Um, we can. I, I'm not. I'm not sure what the proper way to proceed with that. I guess I consult with Sarah a little bit yeah. because it is typically a. <coughs> When Sarah comes back, let's ask her. Okay. I don't remember voting for a tree board. It may be an appointed position by the board. It is right. a it is yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. We can just uh, put out on our social media pages. Right. And yeah. we have a vacancy tree board. Anybody interested, please contact us. Yeah. I think we That's should make that. Yep. We certainly do that. Yeah. Right yeah. along with the sense of your. What's that? That goes right along with the sense of your. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's good. So. Yeah. 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 And also, then you can link to. Sorry, go ahead. Would it also be something we we uh, advertise for uh, uh, assistant dog officer? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have something wrap that. Whole well, separate, but yeah, we're we do need that to discuss too. that some other time. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I probably yeah. want to be the assistant. I want to touch base with a couple of other communities <laughs> and see how they handle it. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm afraid what we're approaching is the need for yet another paid position in right. town or part time. We're it, it, yeah, we're in budget season, so I'll get some numbers for you as to how the community might season. be a lot cheaper than a lawsuit. But, and I think also looking at the penalties and costs here, it's, it's, it feels to me like there's, there's something missing because it talks about impounding the dog. Maybe like that dog would that dog be impounded? I don't know. But maybe definitely some kind of warning. That's why I read that would be impounded. On that back page, much of it is concerned is uh deals with whether or not the dog is uh updated yeah. baby certificate. Right. Yeah, the baby is up to date with more than the dog is home and the okay. Let's get back on the dog conversation. Yeah. Have we yeah. circle back to that again? <laughs> it wasn't let's not do that. Not me. <laughs> let's let that one go for tonight. Yeah, I'm with you. Oh dear. We will accept this reward. Okay. Okay, Great. so we'll that's, that's all I really was missing from the last one was how do you want to proceed? Okay. And do you want to try to get one by a certain date? Put in the statute. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we can you know, figure that out. Okay. We'll see what we can get into interest. But, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 
More to come on that. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay. So number seven, removal of EMS volunteer from roster. Bill? Hi, good evening. Um, so uh, one member of uh, Sarah Grant is a housekeeping issue when you're returning to the internally, and at some point did not get that to you guys for reviewing. Uh, so uh, I need to correct that. Uh, Greta Quinton has moved out of the area, and she has been unable to maintain uh, the minimum requirements for uh, being a volunteer hour wise on the ambulance. And thirdly, Ryan Hannon, uh, who's uh, been one of our Tuesday night people, uh, has had a change in job schedule and family circumstance, and he's asked to come off the roster also. I would, uh, I would okay. So, do I hear a motion regarding those? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Brian, a second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Bill. Do you think uh, a thank you is in order for those folks? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, next. Number eight, approve highway bid for truck and trailer. I'll turn this over to Kevin. Uh, our, uh, our former our highway driver, Scott, Lawn. Um, go look at the old truck park that's out behind the door. We've had that for a couple of years sitting there at the chain. Along with old trailer, turn these two more rules. The old number 40, uh, one that the salt truck. Well, it was either not quite as old as a salt truck, but it's the one that Matt used when his truck blew the motor a couple years back before okay. I got a ruling, okay. and the whole back frame of it collapsed, and so it's not serviceable anymore. It's, it's been sitting up back. Nobody wants it. Um, Scott would like to purchase it and use it on in his maple pocket. Using it for hauling sap uh, along with their old military style trailer out behind the pole barn. It's got some trees about that big growing up through it, so it's been there for a while. Um, <laughs> he's going to work for it then. He's going to be at yeah, work. It's going to take a little work for me to do it. Is it down in the old garage on Maple Street? Nope, it's no. up to Cochran Road. Cochran Road. Oh, okay. All right, do I hear a motion regarding this? Make a motion, we let them have it, the two of them. For 200 bucks. 300, right? 300. 300. Okay, 300 bucks. <laughs> I have a motion, do I have a second? Making sure you're paying attention. Second. Second, second by Gary. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, let's circle back to these uh, discuss informational meeting. Date time and location. So I'm looking for it. Please, folks, uh, oh. the whole information we need ahead of the goal on the seventh. Because we now have a date on the seventh. We have a morning to set up to discuss uh, what night folks are available to have a whole of the community forum to discuss the articles as it was an education fee needed, probably as to what an integrated license is. As much as I know. Yeah. So yeah. only the first three articles will be discussed. Uh, I can't that would be... speak to that. So what, what was told to me by the town attorneys did not have to legally hold an informational meeting for any of them. So it's up to you if you want to hold one. Uh, if we had to legally hold an informational meeting, it has to be done 10 days before an election. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can we do an uh, informational meeting on any one or all, or can we pick and choose? Didn't ask. You just told me you didn't have to do one. That means yes. Well, yeah. ten days before means we pick the ones we want. I guess it would have to be like the week of the twenty second mm. of November. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, November nineteenth would be. A good day for the cannabis thing. That's um, a Friday. That's a Friday. Yeah. Are, is there are there certain days that you don't hold? The reason I say that, and it's not just because they're my lawyers, but the more cannabis solutions guys will be in town on the 19th. Mm -hmm. And if they can be part of, you know, panel or whatever, um, I know I can answer questions, but they can definitely articulate them better than I can, I'm sure. Um, so they're in town on the 19th, um, which would be a good evening. If that works for you guys. That's fine to me. What is the rest of the board? Yeah. 
I think it might be tough to get people to come out on a Friday night. I don't, is there any, I mean, do, is there any other weekday night that they would be in town? I mean, I could probably get them whenever. I see yeah. them themselves. Right. They're coming on night. Right. Is that coming from Montpelier? No, girl. Okay. They can, they'll come whenever I can. Okay. Be here. <laughs> but I just figured we'd kill two birds in one right. stone because they're coming out right. to do some building stuff. So. Right. I would think that the Friday before a holiday, granted, the holiday's not till the following Thursday, is not an optimal date. That's the Friday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Right. But anytime that next week's not optimal because yeah. next well, what, well, you're saying it has to be at least 10 days before, but um, we're. Right. So if if you are having something that you have to have an informational meeting, you cannot. It has to be the ten days before. Like oh, you can't right. be. You could not do November nineteenth. Sorry, I'm like starting to get hungry, so I'm probably not making sense. But so you have to count back. You could only really do it. Do we get to twenty second? But we. Um, that's ten days. So that we don't have that stipulation anyway. Right. We don't have any requirement to do an information meeting. So we could do it anytime between now and December 7th, right? So are you saying it has to be within 10 days yes. ago if we're required to have a meeting yes. without the requirement? Yes. Is there any restriction on the date? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No. Okay. Do you know I don't think so. I mean, yeah. logic, logic tells me no. So what does everybody want to do? I would prefer to do it on a, a once. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Richard? Just a point of information. The town of Elmore is holding a public information meeting on their article to withdraw from the LSUU, as well as ratification of Snow's vote to withdraw from the LSUU on Tuesday, November 30th. Okay, that's good. Thanks, the info. Would are you um, have you been in touch with Brian to know whether he's going to would do some informational right the the superintendent uh, oh uh, I have not I have not I'd like to do that and actually I would love to see us have the same same night for that for that part of it not not cannabis necessarily but yeah. well, for the merge on merge thing we could have both good. things going on and at a given time like. Canvas has this amount of time and the school will have this. I mean, realistically, the people who show up to vote on a school thing are probably the same people you want who are not for cannabis. You want, to yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just oh, yeah. stereotyping here, but those people are probably the same people we want for the informational meeting for cannabis. So, right. I don't know. I'm, I'm just writing the bus. So, tell me why you want to do this. Right. Something like you have to be so many feet from, right. from a school. Right. Right. Yeah. So I like the idea of the thirtieth because of that. That. Uh, but there. No, the, no, no there. No, that would be a conflict. What do you mean a conflict? Well, there's. Well, Elmore's having a meeting as well. No, you want to have it with Elmore. You're saying. Both at the same time. A yeah. Oh, Why can't you? No. Why not? Too Elmore much. Is different it's different it's different. Well, not they if, want, they if want, they they're having the same merge and merge issue. They want, to, they want to dismerge also from Morrisville. So they're voting on dispersing from Morrisville yeah. and allowing Stoughton to unmerge. Right. So they've got a different, they got a different clientele. Well, I'm not here that week anyway, so I guess you're gonna have one. <laughs> uh -huh. That's right. Truth be told. Truth comes out. Uh -huh. No, it didn't. <laughs> I'm just like, I've had it with this, you know, like I'm over it. It's yeah. too much indecision and it just annoys me. So what about the week of like like Tuesday the 16th. Yeah, sounds great. We're already meeting the 15th. Yeah. We, can't, we don't want to do it on a night we're meeting. It's no, too, too nice. much air. Oh, were there these agendas we've had lately? Too much. Way too much. 16th. The 15th. be here till midnight. I'm just going to let you know that the night of the 15th is the first public hearing for the 10 year town plan. And I uh, would expect uh, you to better read that one. Okay. Uh, also, um, the 16th is. Uh, LSUU board meeting um, oh, that's right. and a board meeting for my kids' daycare. So, right. so uh, you need Brian all 
I am putting on the new uh, clerks and treasurers annual conference the week of the 16th through 19th. So should we do it next week? Don't hate me if there's going on. And then the week after that is next week. What about, what about December 1st? <laughs> well, we'll bring you a cake. <laughs> well, you know that we'll bring you. Well, should we? We don't have to make that decision say. tonight, yeah. necessarily. I don't know if it matters. I mean, now it that does matter. Oh, if you're going to have an informational meeting, I yeah. know that it, just, it should be on the warning. It should be on the warning. It should be on the warning we just approved. Yeah. So can we do it like this? Um, whoever's interested in having an informational meeting, no. have his own. What about? Um, I mean, to that point, I'm okay with organizing it. The thing is, and I was saying to a few people, like if I invite people out to an informational meeting, I mean, the people that I reach are going to be people who are for it. Yeah. And the informational meeting is for people who have questions and aren't for it. But imagine um, if you post it, people are going to come. We, we'll do front porch forum where all the angry people look to complain, anyways, and then they'll, you know, maybe they'll see it then. But I mean, my Facebook, nobody's going to see that. And, you know, so it, that's why, like, I need your guys helping with the right people. No, but if it's on our website or it's on front porch oh, forum, yeah, if yeah. we put it on there. I think I propose either we do it on November, Thursday, November 18th, or Tuesday, November 9th. Those are my two ideas. As um, Brian pointed out, November 11th is Veterans Day. So probably what two get, days you just said, Jess? Um, Tuesday, November 9th, or Thursday, November 18th. If we did it the 18th, um, that would be after the... A week before Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's the week. Yeah. Conservation Commission will be here. Uh, and upstairs, it's part of the night. So the 9th, the 11th, not the 11th. I don't know. If you want to hold it on the 18th, you could, but you're simply moving location. Both of you have done it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. If they're available. And I'll be here. I'm going to be here for the night. You're going to check the You're saying, what date was it when you said? The 18th. Thursday, the 18th. That would be a better place to bigger and spread out more. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm fine yeah. with that. The 18th is fine. Would okay. we have a, a access to a sound system just in case we need it? There's one there. Yeah. yeah, they would let you use it. I'm sure. Okay. I can find that. Okay. I will be on the 18th. Oh, okay. I will be. I will not be there, but um, typically I um, have a role to run the informational meetings, your role to run the informational meetings, to so just get any information you need from me ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing um, I could see coming up, it's going to be about uh, the school, it's going to be about money. I don't know if Ryan will be able to address that. Right. We should see if he's going to be available. Oh, yeah. For that, for the 18th. So before we make that date in stone, we better find out. Do you, who wants to, can you contact him, Aaron? No, Ryan no, Harry. Ryan. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, uh, yeah, but we got to do it tonight. It's got to be on the warning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find out right now. Okay. So this informational meeting will encompass everything that's on the for articles one, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but not article, not article four. Right. If this is not a required by law informational meeting, you can hold the meeting to simply discuss the canvas issues if that's what you choose. Right. You don't have to discuss the entire board. Right. I think it'll be a warm yeah. meeting because we'll be a forum with a select board there, but you can set the agenda to speak about what you want. And then the chair moderates the meeting and controls the conversation. That way, if your agenda speaks only to the cannabis issues and somebody wants to talk to ETVs, you can end that conversation right there because it's not on the agenda. We've already talked right. talked to yeah. ETVs. They've had their informational meeting. Yeah, it'll you know, say so it's the yeah. same as the ATV informational yeah. meeting. And as far as the, the school vote goes, I, I don't know about the information regarding that. Um, just need to tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. to put on the warning as far as I don't know if you need the topics or not. You just need the date and time. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, I, should, I think we would just discuss the school, the school issue and the cannabis. Would we, yeah, yeah and you would moderate? Bob? Yeah, okay. I can moderate it if it's on the 18th. Um, did it cost a lot of money or did it cost any money to hire the moderator we had for the ATV discussion? It cost $300. Okay. $300. Would that be maybe something to talk about? Uh, I don't think the moderation is an issue. It's okay. a board, it'd be a select board special meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> For information. So okay. Bob is the chair. The chair is the yep. moderator. Okay. Okay. So six o'clock. So what did you decide? November eighteenth. Is that Brian? Does that sound good? Yep. Does that work, Gary? Six p.m. at GFW. <laughs> November eighteenth, six p.m. at GFW. Yeah, we got to okay. find out a bit. We got to know how to meet, so I might just know. <laughs> Would you say the only night you don't have a meeting? Uh, I may be getting my shot that day, so maybe I might not be. Oh. <laughs> so that's a, that's a cannabis. Not tentatively, that's a cannabis information. informational and the school. School slash cannabis. We're trying to find out if it's a school, too. Does it matter which one goes first? No. Okay. You're here, so you get to choose. <laughs> okay, so are we done with that? Yeah, I, should, I should have a notice soon about. Okay. Um, so okay. Next, sign AOT document for Kent Fieldbrook. So I received a letter back in September about the bridge uh, along the road which crosses Kemper Brook at the intersection of Old Road. They had gone out and inspected the bridge. As the weather indicates, so the bridge inspections every two years. Uh, so they they took a look at the bridge. They made a recommendation uh, based on what they saw there, and I had uh, sixty days to respond to their letter. I worked with Tyler over the last two months to get information from him. I uh, continue to work with him on that piece. Uh, but in order to meet the timeline, that took me to send a form back to say that there are there are two boxes checked here. Well, and the select board warrants now will properly add temporary support to the concrete deck until repairs or replacements can be made. Anticipated date of completion of this repair is September 30th, 2022. Morristown will notify the state writing when the work is complete. And then I checked the next box as well, which is will properly repair or relate to deteriorated components. Anticipated date of completion of this repair work is September 30th, 2022. Morristown will notify the state writing when that is complete. Trevor uh, Tyler has been trying very hard to make contact with the person at the state, Sempus, and it's not getting, um, you got one call back, they miss each other, and it's, it's called a couple times since and not get a call back. Because the verbiage in this is not such that they're closing the bridge. Um, if it was that deteriorated, that's what they would have done. Um, this is really don't know what this is, other than it's, it's, uh, the official made you know, aware. This is one of the two bridges that we are uh, going to be going to the voters for a, a money issue at town meeting to replace the bridge deck. They went out and inspected that bridge, you know, that only bridge in Marshville, and came up with these determinations. So um, I'm simply looking to get the signature of the board, acknowledging their letter, and sending this back. And, uh, you know, the assurances we will take care of supporting the bridge and maintaining it. Folks, this time as we can complete the full project at the end of the next construction season. So we can just wait and hear from Tyler when he comes. Tyler's back. still working on this. They've, right. they've done all the field work. <laughs> they are getting the 30% engineer solution for the dollar out. That's exactly. really what I've been waiting for uh, on that piece of it. And uh, as soon as we get the uh, get the, the numbers from him, we'll put together our town meeting. Okay. Is that it? So, so we're committing to doing these um, repairs. That's right. right. Now, right Tyler, now. Tyler's going to yeah. Tyler's going to guide us. I just used the same date because I can't, I can't give them a date for the temporary repair because I just, I don't know. I, 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 we don't even know. 
their, their description says temporary support under the saturated deck area. So right. Tyler says that's where the water will be seeping down underneath the bridge. So I Tyler's going to guide me on that piece. Uh, we will probably go to the sole source uh, because the folks that repaired the bridge deck with Law and Cody. Uh, I have not reached out to Mark Cody, but I, I can't wait for more information from Tyler. But it's a it's a temporary support system, so not elaborate. Yeah. Just that's what they're seeing. And they're only suggesting this. Mm -hmm. But you know, by them writing this and putting in, you know, putting in a notice, they're showing the liability on us. Right. So uh, if the bridge failed, then they can say their hands are clean and so on and so forth. So okay. Tyler was not concerned about the stability of the bridge when he viewed it. Um, but certainly we're not looking to put any people's lives at risk. So again, we're working with Tyler, continue to work with him on getting this done. So more to come on this. This is just FYI. Really, it's a, it's just a, your signatures on this here, they have to print your name and sign it, is to show that you have been informed of that this issue exists and that you're uh, saying you'll get this work done by the September 30th. Is which is what that's what we tended to do. Your signature is all. It's all. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> so we don't need a motion for it. We just need to sort of sign a receipt. Or Correct. It's just, it's just making notice. notes where, yeah. Now, this is my last meeting before the 9th of November when the notice was due back to them in order to get this. And I, I waited as long as I could, but I, I wasn't able to get all the information I needed for Tyler uh, in that time. So. Okay. And I get a, I did a confirmation that Ryan will be available at 18. Thanks. Well, good. Okay. All, 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 all. Good. good. That works out. This is the one that you repaired earlier. This is the one, yeah. So this is one last spring when Dan was here. The hole appeared in the white side of the deck. And one put the steel plate yeah. in and repaid and uh, temporary fix to next year's construction season. Start that. Okay. All right, next, approve warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, TA report. Uh, I want to draw a huge thank you to the uh, highway department for very successful and injury free Halloween. Uh, last night, the weather was less than uh, adequate, really, for trick or treating. And at the head of every street to the end of the block, we chose to close off. Was a member of our heavy department uh, graciously directing traffic away from that area, and they did so in town for us. Yeah, very, very appreciative. I came by when they were out there, uh, like John Matson was being there. So, uh, but they, they kept their smiles up. Misery loves company, I suppose, but they did a great job. I appreciate you coming out to do that. Thank you. Thank so, you. So. It was really nice to be able to yeah. enjoy that with my daughter. So the last couple of weeks, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Sarah Hassan and I went on a tour with uh, Dennis Smith of the Seven Cemeteries. This is our the oversight of the uh, the Cemetery Association, and uh, it was extremely informative. It was like a history tour of Mount Washington, but it did. He was able to show us at each of the cemeteries some of the issues they had uh, in in many areas. So you know the fixes that need to be done. Some of the issues that of uh, the location of stones and location of plots and whatnot, but it was uh, a couple hours, it was very, very uh, helpful. I did the same thing a while back, that's great. Yes, uh, Ben and I meet weekly now, about an hour once a week. I think we work on the, uh, the language section job description. Brian has been putting out viewers, uh, perhaps for a, a possible section. Uh, that we're working on at this point. More to come of that and uh, more to follow during the budget season as far as uh, the sexton's position goes. Um, Friday the 22nd, uh, several members of the town staff here, once we closed our doors at one o'clock, uh, we went over to the Noise House Museum for a tour. And my thought process in so doing was uh, 
we work here. We receive our paychecks from the taxpayers, but we don't all really know that much about the extremely informative tour. It's, it's so cool I can use that. Is that I, I charge everybody with finding out one fact that we can come back and, and share with everybody else that maybe somebody missed because there's so much information. Anyway, extremely productive hour. Uh, I think we all get a lot out of it. And uh, uh, good. Uh, last week we started a training series. Uh, Andy Glover from the police department is putting it on. He's a certified trainer in uh, workplace safety. I uh, started out with uh, uh, part of his. Uh, Program uh, showing the PowerPoint presentation, which is still a great cons uh, constructive conversation uh, about workplace safety. There are more trainings to follow. Uh, we'll get more in depth, uh, having put our folks through the CPR and first aid training a couple of weeks ago. Um, the end result here and the goal is to do some sort of a live action um, control atmosphere scenario based training at the end. Once we've received all of Andy's training, and uh, Bill will uh, be there to, to guide us, I'm sure. When I ask him, he doesn't know about it yet. But he does. <laughs> we're working working toward that, um, but it's, it's been a good, good training so far. A lot of good points brought out. A lot of good suggestions on how to handle disgruntled folks here in our offices and uh, how to alert each other and how to respond. Where to go? So, what happened? I attended a training with uh, more funding at us on uh, Wednesday night, not too long ago. Uh, there's a local, or not a local, there's a power company working local over at the substation in Katie Stalls, uh, the south end of the road there. They're, they're expanding it. And uh, part of their bid, they included the uh, ability to provide free training to the local first responders uh, around uh, responding to a location where there's down power. And they put on a two hour presentation, it was pretty phenomenal. Uh, very, very pleased with the turnout. The NS was there. We had uh, folks on fire service as well, and it was extremely informative. There's a lot of stuff going on in the main top there that none of us really realized how, how far electricity we got, so on and so forth. Simplus uh, is in the process of writing a proposal for a camera system for inside panel offices here. Um, Sarah has, has uh, been letting you know that there's a requirement for us to have a camera on the drop box outside. Uh, that's the state law. So, if we're going to have a camera on the drop box, I asked some folks to come in, take a look at the building, talk about camera locations. They, um, they talked about the system that they would suggest we put in as one that's a build out. So, as long as you have the put in the right storage system, hard drive to start with. That you can build out the program, the whole thing slowly, so that you can add cameras to the system. Um, if you want to do the whole system all at once, it's a pretty big dollar item. But we can do it in small increments, cover ourselves from the state law, and then as the budget cycles continue, we can add cameras to it, continue to provide the security. And our budget meetings are are progressing. We've been meeting with department heads uh, pretty steadily. Uh, yeah, we're dealing with the Cost of the investment to the salaries, less than nine percent plus your step rate. So, uh, significant work to be done. On my report. I wanted to ask you about. Um, I know Bob was attending the BCA meeting. He had a chance to see how the, the Zoom works and doesn't work. And doesn't, doesn't work, work well. And, and will SimQuest be Working on that also is that a different entity? No, Green Mountain Access TV is the one to provide us with all this equipment. Uh, so maybe it's just the microphones. It's up. poor. It's very poor. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, it makes me really appreciate it having attended a meeting by Zoom. Yes. And I mean, not just, I mean, we don't always do it well here either because people don't introduce themselves when they speak. Like there's 10 people speaking around the room at random. You don't even know who's talking. And um, and I know everybody in the room, and that tells you it's bad. <laughs> and Andrea had no idea who anybody was. She was in the meeting with yeah. me. Was it She's like, visual? "Who's that? Who's that?" Was it the visual as well? As it was audio and visual. It's yeah. terrible. Right. Yeah. Was this just the night for the BCA? Mm -hmm. And you were using your laptop? No. Was it this one? 
Yeah. Can, can I ask a question? Those of you at home, can you hear? Can you put in the chat tonight how, how you can hear or not? Hey there, this is Jeff Egan. Um, I can hear the the board really well. Um, the audio from the the participants is kind of iffy. Thank you. Okay. I know when I've been when I've been zooming, well, it's just and then it go, and the audio goes in and out. Interesting. So it's, the microphone, the audience is right back there, hmm. and they had originally set it up about six further forward from that, where you know the tape is on the floor and court, to try and give a, a the best mix. You know, you lose your equipment to find the best mix of sound and rainbow. I'll move the microphone back, hoping you catch more of the audience uh, participation by doing that. But I, well, you know, I it comes out great right on the DMV TV recording. Yeah, and I listen right. to it on Tuesday. Right. So maybe it's just from home it sounds better. Yeah, it's not good. Okay. Huh. I even tried having my earbuds in and trying to like really listen. And right. like I said, I knew everybody in the room. And I'm still like, yeah, yeah. The equipment is lacking, or or the setup, or. So I know a lot of towns, even really tiny towns, are getting an owl. Have you heard of an right. owl? Right. Uh, um, it's a thousand dollars to yeah. buy it, but it follows. So I've done. Um, like Zoom conference calls, like committee meetings where there's only three of us. Mm -hmm. And it um, there's three of us on Zoom. I'm not even in the room with her. It picks up so well her computer on the Zoom. Yeah. It's like pulling to me on the computer versus her to, to right. talk. It's, I don't know, it's what everybody yeah. is being recommended. So the thousand dollars would pay with mailing ballots on Thursday. <laughs> well, and the other thing with this room, it's all sheetrock and sound bounces around. So it's a, it's an acoustically yeah, bad. That's place. Place. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, sure, it helps. GMAPD made the suggestion to Sarah that we get some table across to try and judge the sound. Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought we were just dressing the place up. Well, that's I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but well, but it's too. such a difference. Like, like I attend concept do meetings on a daily basis, and it's so much better. Like, you know, there could be 120 people in a conference and it's no problem at all. And this was like, are you kidding me? Well, are they, are the people you're conferencing with on their own little laptops? They're in different rooms. There's a bunch of us in rooms, you know, there could be 20 people in a room like, like there was for the BCA. Uh, so one of the complaints of the BCA was paper wrestling that yeah. um, at the table. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. It's, it's a challenge, you know, it's a challenge. It's, Certainly better than not having it available on Zoom, but we definitely, there's room for improvement <laughs> for sure. All right, any more questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Uh, we'll go to select board concerns. Gary. I guess I'm all set, but I'd like to echo uh, what Eric said, the highway department. It was a pretty nasty night out last night. And I came back from visiting my mother up in the hospital. I come down Congress Street. And well, I had to be really careful because there was one group, there was, I think, 15 kids in it, and they were walking down the sidewalk, and seven or eight kids on the other side, and boy, it's hard, to, it was hard to see, yeah. but there, yeah, so it must have been greatly appreciated to have your people out there. Mm -hmm. I bet you did. Did you get candy? I did. <laughs> good, good. And he kept it all, you notice? Yeah. <laughs> now that's... That's about it for me. Okay. Judy. I was wondering, um, will we have police, a police officer at the 18th meeting on the 18th? Because there might be some questions directed to them about the cannabis. I'm playing on the internet. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm. And um, we had the letter from Jay Cox and the woman about how we're going to address this. I would, I would, uh, I, I sent an email to Jess today because she sent, she asked me about the thing about that whole my response would be. My suggestion was a, a board member to meet with Trisha to talk about the history of the, the uh, declaration of her home and why. Is, is it the town or is it Mac? The well, there again, but Mac purchased them. Okay. Uh, the water light department puts them up on their poles. I'm not sure the town has a huge voice in it, but it's a reflection on the town. So, I mean, it's it's worth looking into. I know Trisha has worked with Mac and uh, was they were 
you know, Mike was the driving force behind choosing those. They were very careful to choose items that would bring the spirit of the season to the downtown without it having, uh, and very conscious of not having a religious tone to it uh, around the country. The, the, the reindeer, the tree, the, the snowflake are commonly used because they've not been determined to have any kind of cross the line for the separation of church and state. So, um, you know, I, I was, the letter was very respectfully written, mm -hmm. very nicely written. Um, it, it definitely is an opinion piece. Uh, we certainly want people to feel like they're welcome back to our community no matter what. But I, I think that perhaps you could, some one or two board members without being a quorum, meet with Tricia to talk to her. She has all the history on this thing. Uh, and then go from there and see what I mean, the cost of those is in $600,000 a piece, I think, for each one. They raise a lot of money to buy those for the community and they leave them up for quite a while. It's not just a holiday season. They do it to spruce up the downtown uh, to try and you know, make the downtown more attractive, bring people in. But it certainly wasn't meant to exclude, it certainly wasn't meant to insult. Uh, but I think Trisha is probably best, better spoken about it, yeah. the history of it than I am for sure. Do we know when they usually go up? Is it after Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving? Usually, yeah. Water might put some somewhere after Thanksgiving. Okay. Right. Would our two select women be willing to meet with Trisha and talk about that? Sure. Yeah. Are you, are you guys okay with that? Carrie and Brian? Yep. That'd be great if you do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One request was if, if like, the, the lights that were perceived as being um, more Christmassy. We're only up for a couple of weeks and then taken down. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what the the absolutely willing to have a conversation with Mac. And it is important to me to make, um, like you're saying, make the downtown welcome to everyone. Okay, I, I know when they first started that that they went to all the businesses and the businesses pretty much donated. Yeah, all the the signs or the. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it, decorations that were put up, and and I remember that Arthur's uh, specifically they put uh, I think angels on each yeah, certain yeah. and that was Teresa's request, and they bought them, and that's I think that's pretty much why hell all of them came about as a request to the businesses that that donated them all. I mean it was. And they you know, I don't remember if it was Mac or who it was at that time that started it, but it was that was a lot of years ago. All right, we'll look into that. Thanks, well, Judy. Guess, did we did we make a decision about the dog thing? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna you know, call around and see what programs are out there, how they're handled in other communities okay. of our of our size, like Paul Stone. So I don't we used to have a designated dog officer. Yeah. On Snap Police Department. I don't know if that still is the case or not. They had that in the question now. So uh, I'll check around and see what it is. I, I want to just tell you that we may have come to the point where the volunteer dog officer is no more. Right. And that it may end up costing us uh, money in a budget. So. Yeah. Well, that's happened with rescue. It's all volunteer, bro. Well, know. very little. There, there's a very small. <laughs> Uh, he makes about 17 cents an hour for when he's working. <laughs> and, uh, for like you said, he had to go all the way up in Lux City on this one call without making contact with the owners. So that means he's going to make at least a second trip up to hopefully contact the owners. And it's his free time. And, and you know, whatever, uh, if you pick a dog up and took it to the pound, there's a dollar amount. That he's $20. $20. The, whoever's dog goes to pound is a $25 fee. 20 went to the person who took it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know me, I don't take them to town like how that. Right. You know, because it's not the dog's fault. So how many dogs you got at home now? Uh, three. <laughs> and, and how 17. Many, how many have taken from the town? I can't believe. Yeah. But this dog gets up in Mud City. Even when I do get up there and catch them, catch them I still get nothing. Other than I get a stipend, a small stipend, I think it's 75. A month. Yep, a month. I yeah, think it's not very much. And twenty-five dollars if I pick up the dog. So Woo -hoo. you're gonna retire. And right? take it to the farm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Retire to Judy. Yes, <laughs> Jess. Um, I also wanted to thank everyone um in town that made the Halloween um 
really great um, and safe. And also um, the fire department who um, had, you know, their doors open and giving out huge fistfuls of candy to my daughter's delight and, and apples to counteract, I think. Um, it was really, it was really great to um, experience that and, um, you know, just fortified my love for Morristown once again. Um, and that, oh, um, just a quick follow-up about the RFP um, for um, the vacant buildings. Did that go out and is there a meeting date set? It went out, the uh, meeting set for next week, Wednesday, three o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Brian, I, all I would like to do, I'd like to thank the highway fire department and everybody who did that, they do it every year. And it's just a, a great thing that goes on. It's, other than that, it's, yeah. I'd love to know how many bushels of apples the fire department do that. I forgot to come up and get mine. It's five cases of the red. This year. Yeah, this year. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. And that's it. That's all I have, too. I, I was just going to say I'm gone for the next week. I'm out of town, but I will be at the 5th, November 15th, first budget meeting. And that's our next meeting, right? I'm sorry. Yes. The November 15th is the first right. budget. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's all I have for select board concerns. So uh, is there any old business? I don't see any there. Next is other business. Is there any other business from anybody? Okay, I've got I do, whoop, 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 whoop. I move that the select board make the specific finding that general public knowledge of the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee places down at a substantial disadvantage. I move that the select board enter an executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer. Or employees subject to T1 BSA section 213, firm small A, firm three, to include the town administrator, finance director, town clerk, and the chair of the Parks and Recreation Committee. Second. I have a motion by Gary and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to add. Bill Mapes to that as well. My apologies. Bill Mapes. Uh, that was in your motion. He was behind. It was. I missed that. Okay, Bill, you're in. Uh -huh. mm -hmm.